member. John Racine member. Terry White member. <coughs> okay, we do have a one. So first item is um, review and acceptance of last month's meeting for the uh, <coughs> January 10th meeting. I had uh, one thing. The, um, in, in lines 42 to 48, Jerry was referring to the um, proposed subdivision. And actually, it's a, it's a proposed um, it's a concept plan for a conditional use. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem is we should change those <coughs> for that. Okay. Uh, She's not here yet. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> Okay. It's it's now on the video, so she'll okay. get that. Uh, the record should show that Nancy Knight is here as well. Mm -hmm. Should also show that Rob Wilson is here. And uh, I guess Rob will seat you. Okay. Um, 95, talking about the board's best recreation department plan to improve the surface, but that's sort of a I mean, it's confusing because they're known together, but that's also the town core working group that specific um, betterment of the pond and Snowbrook Trail. Do you want it? Do you want it to reflect the town core working group? I think that would be okay. Appropriate. Yep. Because a recreation department Their handouts? <laughs> not, no, not at this point. I don't know <coughs> what the board's going to do yet. <clears throat> do you have a copy of the new zoning ordinance? Because that's my understanding that they're designing to, and it's not online. Yes, it is. It's on the town website. I can show it to you. Okay. It says 2018 is, but no, not the proposed. The proposed is. Oh, it is? Where is it? it I'll show it to you. All right.
All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Okay, the uh, meeting minutes of uh, January 10th as amended are accepted. The first item on the agenda is old business. Uh, we continue public hearing uh, in regard to a design review for a conditional use permit. Um, Bill, do you want to go through? Just sure. sure. yeah. <clears throat> I got three full-size sets that you folks can share up here. I'll put one up on the board. And just as a reminder, um, this uh, design review is based on proposed amendment to the zone. It's not going to affect the past by the town, so nothing to design at this point. And our task today is to determine whether or not the information that's being provided is adequate to comprise a, uh, an application for a condition use for it. Hi, when you go through the presentation, is it possible for the presenter to lay out the differences between the current zoning and the proposed zoning? No, I understand, but when he goes and set, talks about a setback, he can say, you know, this is in relationship to the existing, and the existing is 20 feet or whatever it is, and this is the proposed, which relates to the new zoning, so we know what we're looking at. Bill, is that something you can Summarize your changes. <laughs> yeah. I can go through it as it applies to this project. Okay, why don't you go through your presentation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a quick summary, here's, here's what I think has transpired that's got us to this point here, is late in the summer, the planning board proposed um, uh, changes to the zoning ordinance, and correct me if I'm wrong, in an effort to increase density, because I think they recognize that density is important to the economic well-being of the, of the community, that the, the beds are what support all our, all our businesses in town. <clears throat> and one thing they were trying to do was eliminate single family home sites from the village commercial district, which is land, mostly land that we own that's in the Moose Run subdivision. And the pro and I think the, that effort was an effort, correct me if I'm wrong, to encourage or force a developer to build condominiums on that parcel of land, which is what I always anticipated was going to happen. In which I think is 
maybe what the planning board always anticipated was going to happen as this piece of land evolved. <clears throat> Small condominium projects are no longer going to get built here or maybe anywhere else for a bunch of reasons. When you come to the planning board for a condominium project, you not only need all the engineering for the land and the infrastructure and the surveying and all that, you need all the, all the plans for the buildings also, the condominium buildings. And uh, to take that process through the planning board to get fully permitted will cost between $100,000 and $200,000. And after you get through that, if you're looking for financing, most banks want about 50% of your units pre-sold um, to, get, to get financing. Nobody, nobody pre-buys condominiums anymore. We live in an age of instant gratification. So trying to get pre-sales for 10 or 20 units just absolutely doesn't happen. The other problem is <clears throat> by the time you go through this pro process, the, the product that you're trying to build to market, bring to market, is probably three years out from where we are like here today. No developer wants to invest money to deliver a product three years down the road. None of us can foresee the, uh, the uh, market that well. So, in all, so for all intents and purposes, I don't see any of these condominium, small condominium projects like that have been so popular in Waterville forever happening again. I just don't think it's gonna happen. So in discussions with the planning board and the planner that they hired, uh, and it's too bad she's not here. She's very good. Tara Bamford, she's been a big help. Uh, the concept was, let's try to achieve condominium densities by having small lots, uh, really small Can lots. Define find small? Big pardon? Define small. Well, I'll show you as we go through the process. They can be whatever size anybody wants. Um, small lots, reduce setbacks, and create a, uh, a, a development that achieves condominium densities on small lots. So um, after the planning board went through a bunch of stuff with uh, Terra, they proposed some, some regulations, uh, which get voted on in March. So the way the, the uh, process works is once the planning board proposes regulations, a developer has to comply or can comply in this case with those regulations. You can't get any final approvals and this is not even the subdivision process. This is just a process to ask for the PUD setbacks to make a project like this happen. So that's kind of how we got here today. Is that accurate? Yes. The, the only thing is today they won't vote to actually grant those setbacks until the March meeting because of the decisions at town. Right. They, they, they can't approve it until right, they the zoning regulations uh, have been approved by town or, or not, at which point this whole thing would go away. Um, which article do we have to vote? Pardon? Which article do we have to vote? I'm sorry, I can't hear. Which article? It's on the town's website. Yeah, no, which... I still can't hear. There's a listing of five... The seven articles that you'll be voting. Oh. Oh, no. There are a whole bunch of zoning regulations in addition to those changes that uh, that are not addressed in this in this application. <coughs> That's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then maybe. Yeah. Careful. There's a whole range of different things that are proposed. The Beyond that, there's there. a public hearing. Yes, yeah, on Monday. On Monday, at three o'clock. Yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. Is everyone in the town going to be notified about this? I wasn't. The only reason I knew about it is somebody else forwarded me the information. Well, it was just decided yesterday, right? Mark? Yes. Yeah. It was just decided. But some yesterday. people got notification. And no, a bunch they, of people didn't. No, they. It's on the website. No. It's been on Facebook. We just made the decision yesterday afternoon. Okay. We'll send out emails to all of the email contacts that we have as a town. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll use Monday. Nixle if if we can. Um, mm -hmm. And it's 3 o'clock on Monday 
Uh, the selectmen and mem members of the planning board will be going over all of those proposed changes, all seven of them, uh, and open it up for public comment. And that's related to the zoning, correct? Zoning all changes. Zoning. Yeah, right. all the yeah. zoning changes. All right, thank yep. you. But right now, the way things stand, it's approved for condos, correct? It is approved for condos. <laughs> In village, yes. okay. So, if we don't get this, then we are, we can get condos, and it's already been approved for that. So, if we turn this down, the alternative is condos. It's well, not that said. they can't put condos in the new amendment, it's just that they have the new amendment um, allows uh, single family homes, at, okay, a greater density with smaller lot sizes, correct, and correct. lower setbacks. Yeah, okay, you got it with for all the reasons that Bill just yes. explained, yeah. yeah. Right, I got it. And then the, the condo is as of right, but then it has to still meet the current zoning regulations. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. The, the land that I've submitted for this PUD change is, is three, it's actually four lots uh, on uh, Valley Road. This is uh, Golden Heights Road right here, the uh, um, Moose Crossing. Uh, triplexes here and there are three lots there's this one that's on the right hand side of the road going up a little bigger lot on this side a little smaller lot over here and a fourth lot that is mostly wetlands it's uh, it's not developable this these three lots are about five and a half acres uh, this lot over here is about another acre and a half that's not developable and so those are the properties that we're looking at. They're uh, encumbered, or I think they're a benefit. The, the cross-country multi-use path runs along here, goes up through here out into the National Forest. There's a 10-foot uh, pedestrian path dedicated that goes this way. There's also a uh, uh, walkway along the edge of uh, Golden Heights Road. This land, this is Snow's Brook that comes into Corcoran's Pond right here. If anybody doesn't know where we are, and I told you where that was. So that that's the property that we're talking about. Uh, this is one of the maps that was requested at your last meeting. Uh, this is just a concept map that uh, um, shows what the intent is. Uh, this lot here uh, is pretty much fully served with utilities, underground utilities, uh, water, sewer, power, telephone. This property over here uh, never never had that ex those extensions put there. Interestingly enough, this property was originally subdivided for the Diana Golden Adaptive and Housing Training Project that Kathy uh, Chandler was going to try to do, and that just never came to fruition. And that's why no utilities were ever extended uh, to that parcel of land. So the whole concept here is um, I'm a big believer in a, in a development concept that's called smart growth and development principles. Smart growth and development principles, among other things, they believe in small lots, creating neighborhoods and communities that work. They feature front porches, which are real community buildings. They have, they downplay automobiles. They try to put the automobiles in the back of, of the cars. They, they focus on pedestrianization and they like common open space. So what we've done here, or what I've done here, is we've created 23 lots on this five and a half acres. The, the access to these properties is through new internal access ways that would never become town owned. These would be maintained by the association and all the access to these uh, a little thing that more here and here are off, off this. And then I envision and we would uh, control this by covenants. Every one of these lots would have a relatively small house. They can't be wider than 35 feet. 
combined with a garage, they would never be deeper than 70 feet. They would all have front porches. So the houses would enter from the back. And I've got some demo things we look at. You enter from the back and you would have uh, these little houses with front porches overlooking this cross country path that goes this way. The units in the back would uh, have garages in front and probably somewhat higher buildings in the back that would overlook the, uh, the, the homes in the front. In this map here, the dark stuff here is all wetlands. The other not quite so dark areas here represent setbacks. The setback requirements are all on, on, <coughs> on this map and the pathways are shown basically what that concept map looks like. Um, Maybe the best thing to do is to look at the um, what we envision this to look like. Um, I've been taking you. These are uh, conceptual ideas of what the individual lots would look like. These are, are two of the lots on the map that you were just looking at. This is the multi-use trail, and this is Valley uh, Road running here. Uh, these, these houses, conceptually, have got two car garages in the back, plus two parking places. This one shows a little outdoor patio on the side, um, and they would all have porches on the front uh, overlooking this path here. This is a conceptual landscape plan that the planning board requested when I was here last month. Um, and what we see is a, a, a low uh, landscaping between units, uh, and the uh, there's a list of landscape plans that would be suitable in New Hampshire for this low landscaping. There's also opportunities in certain places for larger trees. Uh, we anticipate those trees would be non-messy trees uh, like maple, uh, birch, uh, crab apple. Uh, and there's opportunities for those uh, along the, in certain places. Um, one of the things that Tara pointed out, and there's a note down here, is she said, well, you, you don't want to make any of these plantings right on the property line. And we obviously agree with that, but you don't want to have two low growing hedges in there. You only want one. So you might alternate them on one side of the property line or the other. But, but in all likelihood, the exterior landscape plan, you'd avail yourself of the same um, services that you get in a condominium maybe right down to the landscaping services, but going down the road, you wanna make sure all the properties are properly maintained, roads are maintained, um, and, and you don't violate any of the covenants of what you want these things to look at, look like, which I think are all uh, natural wood buildings with, uh, with dark shingled roofs, um, with porches that uh, face out on the street that have post and beam or log features to them that give you a real earth mountain feeling to them. Excuse me, Bill, um, are you the builder? I beg your pardon? Will your company be, be no. the builder? No. So you'll sell it to a developer? Yes, that's my intent. Okay, and they'll have the restrictions that are basically just what you yeah, described? Yeah, all that will be in place. When you go through the subdivision process, mm -hmm. you have to submit all the legal documents for the homeowners association, all the architectural controls, and all that. So that'll all be done and submitted and approved by the planning board. Okay, thank you. Um, this drawing over here uh, speaks specifically to the setback requirements, Mike, that we're looking at on the lot. The, the goal here was to make sure each one of these home sites has, will allow a house that's 35 feet wide. As we look around at, at smaller house plans, we think 35 feet is a good width. Um, so every one of these has, has a 35 foot uh, uh, width for a building. And then typically uh, there's uh, 
a hundred feet of, of building site going back or between the walkway and the road. Uh, that's more than ample room for uh, the home, the garage, uh, if someone wants a garage. Garage <coughs> would be optional if people want it or not. Um, and then the setbacks, under the PUD process, um, you get to, to request what the setbacks are going to be for the property that's being submitted. And what we're suggesting is the setback off Valley Road, which uh, in the zoning is 35 feet today, <coughs> we're requesting that that be reduced to 30. The uh, setback off Golden Heights Road, which is this one here, uh, we're looking for a five foot setback. Golden Heights Road is actually a 50 foot right of way. And we're looking for five, only a five foot setback over here. And that's because this whole, there's a walkway that runs all the way down this side. So there's ample uh, green space there. And we're looking for a 10 foot setback uh, from the property line on this side. Um, Will the walkway remain there? I beg your pardon? Will the walkway remain there? Oh, absolutely. That's key to the success of this thing. If you look at any of these smart growth uh, projects, the pedestrianization that, that, that is, a, is a main feature of these things. And this project basically has a walking path that goes all the way around it and goes out into the national forest. So all the trails will remain there? Will oh, absolutely. Will the town the continue town? to take care of them? No. The these trails are subject to a trails agreement with a ski area. They're maintained by the ski area. The Moose Run uh, Homeowners Association has the right, but not the obligation, to take care of these trails if uh, the ski area does not do it. And the town owns a right of way on Golden Heights. Big pardon? The town owns a right of way on Golden Heights. Oh, okay. So, so if, if the mountain doesn't take care of the cross country trails and Moose Run decides they don't want it because they don't want people in their backyards, Hence, you don't have cross-country trails. The the trails are still there. Well, it's a, but it's they're a not maintained issue. in the winter. Right. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how you folks feel. I think pedestrianization is maybe the number one and most important resort activity in this resort and most of the resorts across the country. I can't believe under any circumstances that these trails are going to go away. They're, they're dedicated. All of these trails through the valley are specifically – identified in a trails agreement with the mountain and a lot of them are the heirs to the, that the rights that the waterville company have are the people that own the individual lots so trying to get out of the well, i did notice that along um, valley road that trail hasn't been maintained by, by the I, mountain. I noticed that today myself and then the other question i had in your plan to the trail to the right that goes off to the national forest yeah it appears to go through a number of lots how is that being handled or am I reading the plan the, incorrectly? The individual lot owners are are the benefits are, have the benefit and the burden of, of the trails agreement. So I'm talking about this this trail right here. Yes, they have the benefit and the burden of that trails agreement. It is it's dedicated land. It is in place. It runs through Cascade Ridge, for example. No, I understand. I just want to make sure that that is going to stay in perpetuity based upon the planning that you're doing. Yes. That's, that's yes. what I'm asking. What, uh, what are the uh, coverage limitations as far as the building? Uh, how much area can take on a lot? Is there a percentage of 75% of, of or say or 60% of lot coverage by a building? You know, what are those limitations? And are there square footage limitations and are there height limitations on these buildings? The, the height limitations are established by the existing zoning ordinance. We're not proposing to change those. What is that? Do you know? It's 45 feet from the top of the foundation to the highest point on the roof. Okay. And I don't think in this project that, that we'll even come close to those heights because we're looking at smaller homes. I think these homes, I, the biggest one might be 2,200 square feet. These and are the smallest? These are, huh? And the smallest? I don't know. I, I well, It'll depend on the market. I think there might be a market for homes that are twelve to fifteen hundred square feet. And what and what's the percentage limitation of lot coverage? You know? there, there is not a lot coverage uh, limitation in the zoning. There's an open space requirement, and the open space requirement is twenty. At least twenty percent of all lots must be open space, and every one of these lots will exceed that. 
the open space uh, excludes uh, like parking areas and stuff like that, right? It's unpaved areas, oh, yeah. and not not encumbered by paved areas, Grassy driveways, walkways, buildings. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sure. What are the size of the lots? Hey, pardon? What are the proposed square footage of lots? I haven't measured the lots to come up with with the size, but there there's about there's a, we might lose a couple of these lots. It's a little tight on a couple of them. We won't know until the final engineering gets done. Call it 20 lots on five and a half acres. Someone can do a quick calculation on that. Yeah, you know, did you do the calculation that quick? Is there any uh, restriction for a property owner that buys one of these lots to prohibit fencing, whether it be edge fencing or anything on the trails? Um, I hadn't thought about that. Um, my the ones that I've seen in other resorts and other communities, you might have some. I mean, we anticipate a little. My little thing doesn't want to work. We we anticipate a little screen in front of the porches. Um, I'm talking about the across the, the uh, across the trail. trail. Yeah. So your question is, can someone put up <coughs> someone a fence between their house and the trail if they yeah, want? Or, or bushes, any or kind of a fence. I would think they no, could. No, across the trail. No, across the trail. No, across the trail. Oh, across, oh, heavens no. Oh, of course. Prohibiting that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, of course. But they did that in Moose Run. The several, I beg your pardon? Several of the trails through our development are no longer there because there's gardens. Um, they've planted trees. Where? In Moose Run. Yes, that's true. Very true. Um, I mean, I know several that I've Well, you we need to speak to the Board of Directors of the Moose Run Homeowners Association, so no and they need to enforce their own regulations. But there's no reason why anybody who's buying there can't do the same thing, because it's already historically yeah, and if been someone, done. If, if it's not enforced by the town or the Homeowners Association, shame on you. Wait, wait, wait. So it's not their mind. Wait, no. can the town enforce that? Two, yeah. two things. A, there's the Homeowners Association, and B, there's the town. Right. Who has the right? I, th I mean, that's well, I'm not an attorney. Animal. I think the first, it's a question I'm planning. confident that the first, the first entity to do that is the homeowners association. The homeowners association specifically has that. And if the homeowners association says, wow, well, go ahead and plant your flower garden here or your trees here, does the town have any right to then come in and enforce this? Because I don't think they do. Well, the, the, co the that's a covenant that that runs with the land. Yes. And again, I'm not an attorney. My understanding is, is but that's it, a very important question. Well, right? I agree. So because, I think I think before we have this meeting on Monday, because I I will bring we'll bring it up again. Somebody has to have an answer to that question. Well, my suggestion is you get a hold of the Moose Run Homeowners Association. But but it doesn't that run through the planning board in the town because the agreement would have been made. The agreement for the property and the subdivision would have been made with the town through the planning board and the zoning. So doesn't the town have recourse to make sure if if the homeowners association isn't doing it, that if the agreement for the trails was with the town, that they could enforce it? Probably, Probably not. The, can you get can the town look into that? Because that's let, let me just finish what I started to right. say when Mike jumped in is my understanding of covenants is they can be legally enforced by anybody who is affected by those covenants. Right. I, I fully understand. So what, the, what but let me just finish, Mike. Mike, yeah. let me finish, okay? And then you can say yeah. what you want. So, but but the problem with that is it's a legal proceeding. Right. You know, and that's a long, expensive pain in the butt nobody wants to get into. The homeowners association is the one that's got the teeth and can move quickly. But, but typically to when the town approves a subdivision, which Moose Run was a subdivision very similar to what you're doing, they have certain approvals that they've given, and those approvals are based on submissions that were made and, and made by the developer and promised by the developer. So I'm assuming in most towns, the planning board or some aspect of the town should have the ability to enforce those agreements. Well, the planning board is not the enforcing agency in the town. The selectmen are. All right. Well, then okay, selectmen. But, but, but I, I I don't know if the towns, have, they've approved it, but are they a party to it? I don't know. Good question. Good, good question. We'd have to ask town council. But if the planning board approves something, 
the homeowners association, the, the, the restrictions on those trails are part of the covenant when you purchase a parcel in that development, right? Okay. So there's a homeowners association that if somebody violates those covenants, the first entity that should try to take care of it is a homeowners association. Then the easements are granted in favor of somebody like the resort for grooming or whatever. I, I haven't read the specific easements that are granted. Okay. So they have an interest in those easements. Okay. So if their easements are violated and they can't do what they have been given the right to do in the easement, then they can take action. Then if somebody comes to the town and says, hey, this is happening on this trail and your planning board approved this plan mm -hmm. conditioned on the easement, then the town could potentially take some action. Well, I don't, but, but that would be on a case by case. Part of the problem case. is that the mountain isn't maintaining the trail behind right. Moose Run. Then, so, so they're not... Right. Treating them as cross-country trails. Now, okay. in the summer, it might be a different issue. Sure. And to me, in my mind, I, I understand smart growth and all those mm -hmm. things. I think it's great. I love the idea of Waterloo being pedestrian-friendly. Mm -hmm. As you know, I have an mm -hmm. issue with the lack of proper maintenance of the sidewalks. And to me, if you're talking about this is a major benefit, but you don't have control over it. So if you're, if you're saying it's there in perpetuity, but there's no way that it can be enforced, then why... Would, why would can, the town what I'm saying approve it? it can be I, I, I understand what you're saying, but nothing's been done. Moose yeah. Run's a perfect example. Okay. I think well, we're getting a little far afield here. Yes. Um, well, this, this, what we're here today to do is to determine whether or not there's enough information to make an application for a conditional use permit. The easement issue doesn't change one way or another, whether this is issued or not. There's still an easement issue. It's, it's property owned by a private person private entity and so that it just doesn't change the time to take this issue up would be during the subdivision approval process not during this well it's something that needs to be considered and, and answers an and answers and answers produced i understand but there's, there's not going to be any let me just finish please second. let me just finish and let me well, I want to one more sentence so i think it's important that you have answers to these questions because i think it's Important for residents to be able to vote on it and in a form map. I, I think it is a good issue. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's, it's a the residents don't vote on this. The residents don't. The vote residents on this. vote on the and we need to, change. Mr. Chairman, can I can I just make a point? For this meeting and for the meeting on Monday and for town meeting, what you are voting on on those seven questions on the ballot have nothing to do with this specific. Right. Submission. They're separate. Okay. They are separate. Yep. I get it. The, 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 what you are voting on are, are actual changes to the ordinance that then every plan that comes in has to meet. Right. Okay. So I just, you're not voting on this project. And that's important because I hear it all the time. If I vote against Article 5, I'm voting against this project. You're not. You're mm -hmm. voting against the changes that are being proposed to the zoning ordinance, which apply to everything right. land use wise. Okay. So you have to look at the individual warrant articles right. and that's what we're going to discuss on Monday is what right. do the changes in those articles mean for the whole zoning ordinance, not this project. However, okay. as was brought up at the last mm -hmm. board meeting, this project cannot go through as proposed without these zoning changes being accepted. Well, actually, we have. It will be far less dense, setbacks, all of those requirements. Could be we more dense. Be it could be more, it could be more dense. dense yeah. But the We're, setbacks and everything need to be approved in order for this particular, this clear cutting, putting in new roads project to go that's through. All, that's all true. Yes. So they yes. are. But, but, uh, but we do have PUD regulations right now that will remain in effect if it if the question that's <laughs> being asked is defeated so and, and we have valley road yeah that would take down a significant number of trees as opposed to 
as it currently stands. Yes. As opposed to what? As opposed to the way Valley Road currently stands as we drive down the road and we see the trees. It'll be clear. <coughs> no, no, no. That's, the, uh, that's this project. If we just change the setback from 35 feet, which is what I think it is now, to 30 feet, which is what is proposed, that one change would cause how much of that tree coverage to come down on the valley? Well, uh, someone's down. making an assumption that you can't cut down trees yeah. in, uh, in a setback area, and that's not correct. A landowner can cut down any trees they want. I can go cut down every tree on that property tomorrow if I want. I have that right. I mean, I wouldn't do it. And there's some advantages. <laughs> huh? I would made a snide comment. I well, that's okay. I've, I've, had the, I've got those on the phone. Times um, what, you know, what really controls what trees stay and what trees don't stay when you go in and develop a lot is is what the what the grading changes are and when you change the grading and you change the the drainage the uh, any place the grading is going to change those trees have to come down because you're changing yeah. the contours and the, and when you do that you typically change the water on the uh, that has impact on existing trees too so that's why if you go look at any of the the projects in town most of the trees end up going away it's just a hard reality of that. Okay. Um, no. The next thing that you folks have in front of you is you asked for a conceptual grading plan and drainage plan that Horizon Engineering has done. That's, that's uh, this drawing here. And this shows all of the draining on the uphill side of the road coming down here to existing uh, drainage ditches. Thank you. And on the other side of the road, it's kind of split. Some of it goes one way, some of it goes another. You find it? What are the contour Two. Thank you. I'm sorry. This it wasn't sitting <laughs> Surface drain. Beg your Surface drain. Yes. <clears throat> Going to existing uh, drainage ditches. Any questions on that? Please. Straightforward at this point. Subject to a lot of other engineers. Can you explain a little bit about where it ends? Yeah. I see the dark. Uh, where well, we see the water going. Yeah, the direction of it. Yeah. There's a major <coughs> drainage ditch on both sides of Golden Heights Road. Yeah. They all go to a um, a uh, a long uh, ditch. I forget what it's called. It actually helps clean the water before it goes into the uh, the stream that runs down across this piece of property here. So it's all going down to the road. That's correct. Um, there's a little bit of, of water that will go this way out into this stream, ends up in the same stream. Yep. But all of these drainage ditches were designed originally to accommodate those flows. Or at least that's Horizon did the the engineering for uh, <coughs> run, and they're doing the, the, the engineering for this, so that's what they anticipate. Any other questions on that? Can, can we assume that the town, uh, 
is in favor of the new zoning changes, the planning board and the zoning board. Is the planning board. The board of selectmen is recommending that they be approved. Okay. It's on the board. All right. Thank you. So basically, you just surface draining to the wetland on the south end and over toward Heights Road on the north. No, end. no, all that drainage shows the other way. You see the arrows, Terry, on the uphill well, side of the road? Yeah, yeah. And all the drainage goes to. On this side here, all the drainage goes to the drainage ditch on this side of Golden Edge. Well, it looks like it actually works that works its way to a little T. There's a little piece here that will no, drain this I'm way. I'm talking about on the south side. Looks like it goes both directions back toward that little T and then into the wetland. Right there. Hammerhead? Hammerhead. I, I don't know if it'll go into this stream or if it'll bypass the stream and come all the way Well, down. it shows the arrow, it shows the green from the other side into that same area. Halfway I don't understand your question. Lots three, four, five. So the green is going this way, this way into the wetland. Yeah, correct. And that, that's a stream that runs out through here, not just a water. Thank you. Bill, when they do a drainage plan, do they sort of look at it from the point of view of a 100-year flood, or is it what would be reasonably acceptable at the moment? Yeah, it might because be more than a 100-year flood right now. Do you happen to know, Mark? No. The, 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 the regulations have gotten very strict on that, and, um, and they're very good in terms of controlling the flow. One of the things that's interesting is all of, all of these drainage structures have to be designed for peak flow. And, and what happens in Waterville Valley, because we've got such a big drainage area, is if it rains two inches in two hours, the peak flow is substantially later than that because it comes all the way down. So the, the, these drainage structures don't deal with that because most of that stuff goes into Corcoran's Pond, Mad River, and so on. Well, but these are all very good, and the state regulates that very closely. I'm only looking from the perspective like a new peak over the 35, 40 years between Irene and settling the dynamics of the drainage of change is creating an issue. Yeah. So it was maybe adequate 30 years ago, it was inadequate at the moment. The, the, the drainage regulations have changed completely since that project was built. Very substantial changes there. But Mr. Chairman, we had several conversations going on. Yeah. It's going to be difficult to take notes. Okay. And and you guys are going to miss comments that are made by folks that are here. Okay. Thank you. We you have your drainage plan. Mm -hmm. We do have your drainage plan, which was one of the requirements. Good. Um, looking at my submittal, the, the four things you requested at the last meeting, we've looked at the conceptual landscape plan, which is this, the um, um, concept plan with the setbacks to the um, adjacent properties, which is shown, shown both in color, and then you've got a black and white concept plan too, um, and then the conceptual drainage and grading plan. So those are the four things the planning board requested. In, in the discussions that I had with Kara, she suggested uh, some other things just to make sure you knew what you had. One of them is looking at the original subdivision, which was called Snow's Mountain Subdivision A, which shows a dedicated trail on it, by the way. Um, and that was that was recorded. That was done way back in uh, 2003. So you've got a copy of that just for informational purposes. Yeah, I have some questions on that though. Um, you provided the uh, deeds yeah. that give us the deeds uh, and the deeds refer to this particular plan here. And I, I was having a hard time 
determining the um, consistency between the deed the way it was described. The the deed, I didn't submit any deeds with the covenant. So your questions on the covenant? Yeah, where you, you deal with the easements. And this, I think, goes to the, the trails that we were talking about. Um, for instance, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, declaration, page 13, halfway down, and it talks about uh, Lost Castle, Golden Heights Road, Flat Mountain Road, Drake's Brook Road, and the pedestrian path, pathway depicted as 10 foot sidewalk easement on the plan. And I'm assuming we're talking about Snow's Mountain subdivision. Is that correct? No, there's no 10 foot easement on this piece. The 10 foot, the, the, the Moose Run Declaration encumbers both the Moose Run subdivision plan and the Snow's Mountain subdivision A. The, the, they, they went together afterwards. But the Snow's Mountain subdivision A was done in advance of Moose Run. But there are two different, there, there are a number of different kinds of pedestrian ways. And I think what you're reading is, is a difference between the, the uh, multi-use trail and the other pedestrian ways that are in the subdivision. Well, somebody highlighted it. I was assuming you would do yeah. Yeah, it, the 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 ten foot sidewalk easement is a ten foot uh, uh, pedestrian way that runs uh, along the main uh, road that goes up through Moose Run. There's also a ten foot uh, pedestrian way that weaves it, its way through Moose Run, which I think is the one that people have planned it over. Right. Right. Yeah. And those are unpaved, correct? Huh? Yes. Both of those are unpaved. Yes. Yes. Okay. All, all of them are unpaved. And then the other one is the 20 foot wide multi trail easement. Yeah, I think that's picked up on page 15. Yeah, the 20 foot easement on this, is on the Snow's Mountain Subdivision 8. <clears throat> yeah. You really got to look at both subdivisions. You do. I know. I want to look at them all. That's right. I'd like to get it clear just so that we know. How it's going to be so you, you folks have you you folks approve that subdivision. You get all the maps. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to sit down and go over them, we can. But that you know, it, what if you put the maps in front of you and get this, you it, it, it clarifies. Mm -hmm. And one of my questions was, the, um, I wonder how that everything I can read in this declaration refers to as a show on the plan. That's correct. The right recorded now. plan. Right. Now, as I see this plan. It shows an easement in a particular location, but it looks to me as though, as though it's been moved from uh, in, in, in lots 14, 15. It's been shifted over. That was done as part of that subdivision plan. It was approved by the planning board and all those documents were submitted. So that the, the location as is shown in here and, not, and labeled as the multi-use path is covered by the declaration yeah. of that easement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we all, as you just pointed out, Terry, I also gave you the um, you know some excerpts from the Moose Run de Declaration right. as it relates to the trail. Tara wanted a uh, table of setbacks, yeah. which I gave you, and I, I have to tell you, I think it's a really bad idea to have two things that cover setbacks, <coughs> these setbacks here and the table. Because as you go forward, if there's ever any changes and, and it doesn't get changed in both places, it gets lost. That redundancy in two places is a bad idea. And I don't think the table works well for what we've requested here. You can decide what you want. I, I think they're consistent now. But I, my personal feeling is having it in two places is not a good idea. But that's up to you. Um, and then I also included a copy of the original trails agreement that encumbers all of the cross country and mountain bike trails on all the private land in Waterville Valley. Okay. Um, and that's included there. I, I guess I, 
I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out these easements, and I wasn't able to really get myself clear on it. So maybe you pull out the maps? I, I pulled out the map that we had here that, that was presented. But you didn't pull out the Moose Run map? No, I didn't. Yeah, that's what you mean. I have it in my office, Terry, if you want to look at it. Yeah, should that be part of the application? I'm wondering. That's Not part it's... of the application. We, we just, you it, referred to it. It's in our files. So if you refer to it, we can get that plan and and have it for you. But I wouldn't I wouldn't make it part of this. I think that would lead to confusion. Well, then perhaps we should have it just as a reference or something to look at. Yeah, it. yeah, we can and bring it to the meetings. And see how they are. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then can we make that an additional piece of information that we need to get? Well, that's not him, it's us. Yeah. Well, we're good. There are easements, there are easements on this, in this application. Yeah. That are shown on the plan for this application. Right. That we should have documentation of the, um, <coughs> the protection of those easements in this application as well. And I don't think we have it with what we have. If, if I have to go outside of what's been given my in the application to find out if it is protected, I'm, I'm not sure that's good. Well, the only ones that apply to this application, Terry, I have no problem going over it with you. There's a 10 foot wide pedestrian easement that runs through here. Okay. Mm -hmm. This location of that 10 foot wide pedestrian easement was taken from the Moose Run subdivision, the recorded subdivision plan. It's shown on the plan, and it's referred to here as shown on the plan. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. I just want to make sure, because some of these can move around. Some of them are fixed, and some of them are movable. That's correct. And that, what I would like to do is get it clear on that. Well, if some of, the, if, if some of them are moved by the homeowners association, I, I don't know where they are. It's moved by agreement of property owners, I think. I, I don't know. The, the other one, this this trail here, to this point, is shown on the Moose Run subdivision plan. From here on, is shown on the on the uh, Stones Mountain subdivision A plan, which you have. So the only two trail easements that you're looking at is this one here, this one here, and then there's one that runs down along the side of the road in this wide space between. Golden Heights Road and the property line that would be it. And that's all shown on those plans. Well, I, I'll get together with Mark and see if we can figure out what these easements are. Just, I'm not coming to it. If, if I'm available, I have no problem selling down with that. I would be appreciated to. I mean, we'd have to check with Tara and with town council, but if the homeowners association moves what was approved by the planning board, they would have to record that. Otherwise, it wouldn't mean anything. I'm not, I'm not saying it's something. I, I, I didn't mean that. I mean, okay. In, in some documents, yeah. you're allowed to move it. In other words, it's not a fixed position. The only one I know that was moved is this one over here. It was moved, and all of that information is was submitted and approved with the Snow's Mountain Okay. Because right. yeah. that required the approval of Booth Creek to move that, and I got that to move that down here. So. And, and then the Moose Run Subdivision A was recorded. So we have two recorded plans that we'll have to refer to. But if you have copies of those, you can look to see that what he's drawn on this map matches those two recorded plans. And that's what I would like to have. Okay, yeah. And I would like, to, if we're referring to them, I'd like to have them on record anyway. It doesn't have to be part of the application okay. package, but it should be on the record with the application. Yeah, okay. So, what what does that mean on the what does it mean on the record? Yeah. Well, it's, if it's something that we're if, some, if, if I have to refer to something over here to understand what's, what's going on here, and I make a decision based on that reference, I'd like to have that reference reference on the record with the application. Well, the, what does on the record mean? I, I'm just trying to figure out what you want. You could reference it. We could give it an exhibit number for that matter. But well, but what you want is a copy of all the recorded documents relative to to. The, the Moose Run subdivision. I let me let me tell you what I'm trying to do, and you can tell me what I need to do. If you really know all this, okay? I sat down, looked at the plan, and I looked at several different easements that were labeled in different ways, and then I looked at what I thought you had given us, so that we would have 
documentation with regard to how that easement was protected or how those easements were protected. Well, I, and I couldn't I couldn't get from here to here, well, well, except maybe one. Okay. The confusion is that paragraph covers all of the pedestrian easements in in two subdivisions, and I and I gave you that language only as it applies to this property here. Okay, that's why I, you got confused. Okay, but I, well, I can't make it. I can't make the connection. What do I need to make the connection? I guess is what I'm saying. Well, I, this is a 10 foot pedestrian easement that runs here. And that's the location as that's shown on the Moose Run subdivision map. The engineers mm -hmm. did the Moose Run subdivision map. They put that. I can't find that on here. Where okay, have so point we're going in yeah, yeah, so when you approved the Moose Run subdivision, there was a plat map that was done that had the trails on it, Good. okay? That has a plan number at the registry. There was then a Moose Run subdivision A that also had a plat map and that was recorded and it has a plan number. On this, when you approve it, you just say that the trails are shown subject to plan one, two, three, four and plan five, six, seven, eight at the registry as a note on this plat that you're approving, then it gets recorded. Now, all three of those documents are tied together at the registry. I, you know, and that way everybody can refer back, get a, get the three pictures and look at it. Okay, if we, if we can get those plans and I can look at them and I can refer yep. to those plan numbers. Got it. I want to be able to tell somebody. Okay. That I yep. understood. understood. The other thing I want, I'm sorry, go ahead. But is, oh. you see what I mean? Just yeah, put it as that, a Yeah, that's fine. Point. I mean, I think okay. it's personal, Okay. Uh, a good request. And I think it's important to understand that. Right. I, I was just going to ask, it seems, it's concerning to me that uh, the Moose Run Homeowners Association apparently has changed some of the existing trails. I, I don't believe well, that's the case. Okay, all right. But e let's say yes or no. Do they have to come back to the planning board if they make a change and get it, that approved? Because in... In my mind, that's kind of very important in terms of getting this approved, that, you know, there is some mechanism to make sure that the trails are, ma are maintained and also stay where they are. And then this homeowners association sometime in the future doesn't suddenly decide that they're going to move them or have them disappear. Right. Uh, the planning board doesn't control easements. Okay. Okay. So easements are agreements between the property owners and... Uh, there is probably language in the covenants that were approved by the planning board when the subdivision was approved that tell you how to change <clears throat> easements or change property use. That's probably part of the covenants. Well, um, I guess I, what I'm I asking. Look at. I guess what I'm asking. It wouldn't is, have to come back to the planning board. Is there a, a way change. that you can make sure that these are properly protected in perpetuity okay. through some mechanism? Okay. That's all. Okay. All right. And again, this would this would come up during the right. subdivision. Yeah. Right. But I do have a question other than that. Um, no. I'm looking at lots 13 or 12, 13, 14, and 15. Yeah. And uh, one of the advantages of the plain unit development is that you have you can take something like this wet area, leave it open and un undisturbed, and so it's it's good for the environment. It really works out well. That's one of the reasons you go for plain unit development because make the best use of the land. And that's what you've tried to do here. You've tried to make the buildable land where the buildings go and you try to make the uh, dedicated area where the wetland is, the wetland is not disturbed. I'm just wondering why those lots extend as far as they do into the wetland as opposed to maybe back closer toward the, the trail. No, no, it's a very arbitrary line. It's not much use to the owner because they're going to be on the dry side of the pedestrian path. I would, I would have no problem moving this line up very close to this trail in here. I, this line's very arbitrary. In fact, I think I drew that. I don't know. That line, I put that line in there early in the process, and there's no, no real. I think you might want to consider moving it. Yeah, I'm going to try to protect more of the wetland. Right. One question, Bill. How do you come to the determination of the number of living units that are going to be applied to this uh, this land development? Well, my my personal feeling is that 
they're ideally suited for single smaller single family homes yeah you know we, we don't have a product like this in the valley i think it's a it's a piece of the market that's missing um however the, the zoning allows the, the zoning that's in place now allows duplexes triplexes and multi-family dwelling units in in this application here i've kept the ability for duplexes and triplexes and i and i don't think these lots will not accommodate a duplex or a triplex it would require an adjustment of lot lines and a con some consolidation of lots okay. but i've left that ability in there because i thought that's what you folks wanted it's not the the development scenario that i would see but if you said thought you did not want duplexes or triplexes in there i i have no problem taking that out okay, i did that as a company you first, folks your first application your first presentation a month ago you talked about 25 individual family homes Right. And here in this presentation, it says up to a shall not exceed 40. Well, that's what Tara wanted. And I could not figure out why she wanted that number there. I, I, that number is not, not, it doesn't matter to me. I can't ever see 40 units being there. I think that's okay. absolutely, if you want a different number in there, I have no problem with that. Tara is the one who, who I think that the, the she was trying to say was, there was some concern about well if uh, you take this concept plan and you get a, a conditional use permit for this parcel of land uh, for a van unit development that isn't necessarily this is not necessarily the subdivision that you will end up with correct and that there was some concern that well what if you go down and just make three lots now you know the, the density isn't going to be there anymore so i think it was an attempt to somehow make sure that whatever the subdivision was that was eventually uh, applied for would have a decent amount of, of units as opposed to not. Well, she didn't talk about a minimum. She talked about a maximum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she had a minimum and a max. She had not, 20 not, to not 40 in, or something like that. Not in the no, discussions with me. The first presentation was 25 single family homes. Right. And so now I understand where this number 40 came from. Oh, I think it looked to me as if each of these lots could not sustain a triplex. No, they couldn't. Absolutely cannot. So I agree. So yeah. I'm, and, I'll be and quiet. The, the, this revised plan with the increased setback on, on this property line here and, and on this property line here, or not the increase, when I realized what it was supposed to be, we, we lost two lots. So this is two lots fewer. And when we get into the more detailed zoning, we might very well lose a lot here and we might very well lose a lot here. So I don't think you can depend on the fact that you're gonna get 23 lots and 23 units out of there. I, I think it's very likely you lose at least two. Fair enough. Bill? Lots 12 through 15 uh, appear to go right to the north, north edge of the nature trail, all right? The building envelope does. The light green part goes right to the north edge of, of the nature trail. Down here? This yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that would make anybody walking along that trail be right up against somebody's porch. Wouldn't right. It? Well, that's not good, is it? I mean, or should people have it, a feeling that they're not walking across somebody's yard when they use that nature well, trail? The, I personally think it's good. And where I've seen this done previously in other resort areas, it, it really, the, first of all, the person who buys that lot has got to want to be able to see the activity going on and, and wants to be part of the activity. Um, so some people see that as an asset. Some people see it as a detriment. And the individual lot owner has got to make it, that decision when they buy that well, lot. Well, I, I think it also affects the community. It wants to use that nature trail. Wouldn't it be, it, would it be possible for you to, for this plan to include uh, shrinking that building envelope where it adjoins the north side of the nature trail so that people aren't feeling like they're walking across somebody's property when they use the uh, trail? I, I, I wouldn't do that myself. Um, so quick question. There's another um, hiking trail that's not depicted on this map at all. 
so I'm wondering if there's a re so I'm assuming then we're completely getting rid of that. Are you one? talking about the one that runs right straight through here? Yep. That trail was abandoned, was was legally and technically abandoned uh, when the Snows Mountain subdivision was done, um, and we've allowed the ski area to continue to use it because there's nothing else there. So yes, it'll be gone. It'll be gone. Yeah. Someday it'll be gone one way or the other. I'm sure. Okay. Um, does anybody have the board have any additional information that you might want to have for me? Mm -hmm. I guess one question. Um, mm -hmm. Are you considering okay, whether or not these uh, properties that's the will be allowed to have fences? No, I, no, I, as I think about it, I think they ought to be able to have fences if they want between the, the thing. And I think they ought to be able to have, you know, this kind of landscaping in here ought to be expanded if they want to. And that probably address addresses your concern, sir. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Randy. Randy. I, I do think that, you know, the lot layout that allows a fence or landscaping between the house and the the, uh, the multi-use trail is very desirable and probably achieves some of the things you're thinking about. Yeah, I'm just thinking of as a potential hiker is going to be really turned off feeling like it's very uncomfortable feeling like you're walking through somebody's yard when you're using a nature trail. But you have a whole national forest, I mean. Well, but why should we give up any part of it to favor and promote? Uh, it's private because it's their property. Their property. It's an existing nature trail, isn't it? Mm -hmm. oh, it's not an existing nature trail? Oh, oh okay. I, I know what you're talking about is all prospective and may or may not happen as to this particular development. But the way this development is designed, your your concept is there are going to be four or five or six model homes that people will be able to pick and choose what they want. Something between anything between twelve hundred and twenty two hundred square feet, no garage, two car garage, porch, no porch, et cetera, et cetera, is is kind of the way you're envisioning this. I don't know if they're Two designs, no, no, no. Or I'm not, twenty I'm designs. Not, yeah. I, you know, and and I'm not going to be the one doing it. So I don't. I, we will put the architectural controls in place, the colors, the finishes, the roof colors. Um, but whether there's two designs or twenty, I don't know. Um, so if the setback goes twenty feet rather than 35 feet. Which, which setback, Terry? To Valley Road. To Valley Road? Yeah. It goes from 35 feet to, to 30. But in the, in the amendment is to bring it down to 20. I'm sorry? I don't hear the very well. <clears throat> the amendment to the zoning code would bring it down to 20. The, the zoning the zoning change does not propose Doesn't any changes propose to the setback. Changes to setback. The, the changes to the setback are being done as part of the PUD process. Do you understand the difference? <coughs> the, 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 the zone, the setback, and this is your, yeah, we're not, we're my not. mind, but the, 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 the setbacks in the zoning ordinance are not being changed as part of the, as part of the zoning change. What's happening in the zoning change is they're expanding and better defining a PUD. The PUD uh, regulations and that are there now are pretty open, very pretty difficult open. to comply with because yeah. you don't know what they say. That's Is that right. accurate? Yes. yes. I don't want to put I don't want to put I don't want to put words right. in anybody's mouths. But the PUD process allows you anybody with a certain amount of land to go in, and you can change um, setback requirements. Mainly just dimensional requirements. Dimensional right? requirements. Mostly yeah. just setback requirements. So, so and and it's important to note that the only setback requirements are not on where it borders other properties. You, I cannot come in and say, okay, on these lots here or next to your lot, I want to change the setback 
No, you bought that property. Someone else owns that property. You have the right to rely on what that setback is. The only setbacks that are being changed are the ones between the, the, the lots that are being proposed and the, the road right away. Right. And what, what is the change to the road right away? The road right away in the zoning is 35 feet. The road, the right of way off the road in this plan is 30 feet. Right, but the proposal to change it at the town meeting would be from 35 feet. The, there's, no, there's no proposed change in the setback in the zoning. It says right here. In your yeah. I, have, I don't know what that is, it's but probably, it might not refer to this I don't believe you have any proposed yeah, We actually yeah, specifically year. decided to wait until next year. We're allotting a whole year to delve into setbacks. So that's that was a very conscious decision we made as we went through this process. I'll, so, I'll look at that change with you right after, okay? Can, can yeah, we just, because it's not part right. of what we're doing. So you're applying for this under the PUD? That's yeah, correct. Under the plan yeah. yeah, development, plan which gives you, development. and conceptually, if you wanted to, you could just connect these buildings and actually add more units if you wanted to. I mean, under the existing zone. Under the existing zone, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and we actually have planned unit development regulations in place right now, which he could come with this plan under right. the existing PUD. Mm -hmm. But what the planning board has done is Try to better define so that when a developer yes. comes in, it's clearer to everybody what is allowed it's in the PUD. It's very open ended. It's right very now. open ended right now. Pretty much do whatever you want. That's right. I see why there's some confusion because on the, uh, the notice, it did say amendment number three would amend article 4H9A by reducing the front setback, setback on commercial C1. From 35 feet to 20, but it doesn't. That's right. Oh, that's, that's not right. this land. Right. This is C1, not village commercial. Okay, I, I stand corrected. It does change yeah. some setbacks. It, I didn't realize Under that. commercial, yes, because we talked that. about zero setback, and mm -hmm. then you guys lessened it. Town center for commercial. Right. right. But what we're talking about here is with village commercial. No, so it's a different zone. C1 commercial. No. No, no. no it is not. It's village it's commercial. commercial. So the yeah. setbacks remain. Where is C1? Where is the other commercial? The commercial one zone is across Valley Road around the arena and around the parking lots. Parking lot. That's the C1 zone where the where the Black Bear is and all the parking lots. Where you live, Mike. Central where you live, Center. Mike. You live, you <laughs> live, you live you've carved out a piece of we carved, C1. Out, we carved out a piece. And but we you're own, in C1. We own that road. Yeah, but oh, you're, actually, in road. you're in C1. You're in C1. You're in the C1 zone. Okay. 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 So, um, any board member would like to see any more information with regard to a complete application? <laughs> so now, uh, Brent. Can you clarify my original question? If a property owner in that development puts up a hedge which blocks the trail. Would the town have to hire an attorney and go to court to I, remove it? I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, on a case-by-case -case basis, yes, we okay. might have to. But is there a way, I guess she's getting at, that you could, in terms of this project, put something in that gives you more power to make sure that that's not done? The I think answer, that's that's a major concern. That the a lot the of answer staff. to that question is no. Here, here's the here's the sad part. Why not? It, well, I'll explain it to you. All right. The the multi-use trail that runs throughout the valley that's yep. used for cross country and mountain biking. Yep. Is subject to an agreement, an original agreement between the Waterville Company and whoever was the first person to acquire the ski area back in '94, and then all the subsequent owners of the ski area are now the parties to that agreement. All that property encumbered by that easement has been sold. Okay. Okay. The only property that currently is still owned by the Waterville Company because it was the Waterville Company trying to give the rights to the ski area 
to make sure they could always have cross country and right. trails. So all of that that runs through Moose Run, it uh, it runs through Cascade Ridge, it runs through uh, BBTS property, it runs through the uh, tennis courts, it runs through the golf course, and it also runs north from West Branch, the bridge over West Branch Road, runs up to behind right. I understand, West but we're only talking about the passing here. Let me just, let me just fill it, finish. So the only <laughs> property that the Waterville company still owns is, is this here. Right. I do not have the legal ability to change that trails agreement as it relates because of the, it, it's subject to the agreement with the ski area. And I cannot unilaterally change that. And I cannot change it across all the other properties that are, that are now owned so by So you're saying people. those trails are not owned by the uh, purchasers of these lots? No, they are. Yeah, they are. They well, are. You just have an easement. Well, I understand. So it, cities do this all the time. You could make something specific to this project that gives you more control over the existing pathways so they someone couldn't come in and put a... Here's what I can do it. and I'm willing to do, but I'm a little... I, I, cons, I, I get concerned about conf, conflicting um, uh, enforcers. Yeah. Okay? This, this trail here, the only private land that that we still own that's encumbered by this trail. Because the one to the north is part of Moose Run? Yes, this is all in Moose Run. Okay. Uh, this trail here, um, uh, I lost my train of thought for a minute, is... Um, you still own it, right? You, you, oh, the, the Moose Run Association has the right to main the, maintain this trail if it's not maintained by the ski area. Okay. Okay. This whole subdivision belongs to the Moose Run subdivision. This, okay. this, this, all these lots are part of Moose so Run. So that'll be part of their and HOA. They will stay with Moose Run. All right. Okay. I suppose that in the sub agreement for this subdivision, you could add that same provision in here. I, I guess the concern is we've already heard that there are other aspects of existing trails, part of Moose Run that run behind that people have kind of usurped the area. And so the, at least my concern, because I think overall, I don't really have a problem with the plan. I think you've done some nice things, but I also think that if the town doesn't matter if you put it in perpetuity the trails, if you can't enforce it, it doesn't do you any good. So all I'm saying, I would feel a lot more comfortable with this plan. If you had some mechanism that the town could enforce or to the planning board or the zoning, whatever the right mechanism is, could enforce that those trails stay open. That's all. I spent all. probably three hours with my attorney last week trying to do just that. And he says, I don't have that legal ability. The easement exists in perpetuity. If somebody does something to violate the easement, theoretic, theoretically, planning board, selectmen, the town, <laughs> right, can do whatever is necessary to enforce the easement. Right. Uh, because I, I, know, I believe that I believe that's true. Right. Right. That's my understanding. Because I know in other towns, like the Concon Commission, for example, if they allow you to do certain things, you have easements and everything, they can enforce whether that's done or not. That's all I'm saying. I, I, you know, if if, if if we were to go back to 1994, you, you'd probably take different steps to make the town a party to that trails agreement. Back then, right. I think everybody thought the, the Waterville company was the benevolent overseer of all this, was going to own it forever and was never going to be a problem. You know, now here we are with 25 years later, and, you know, that's – that's not the case. I, but I, I, I feel very confident right that it's it, it's not going to go any. It, there's okay. no way it's going to go anywhere. Um, but someone's going to enforce it. Well, that's know, what I'm concerned If you've about. got people who don't want to enforce the covenants, then... Mm -hmm. So could these easements become right-of-ways, and could that give you more? Beg your pardon? Could the easements that you have become right-of-ways, and would those right-of-ways give you more control? Mm -hmm. Or is that... If they became right of way, yeah. they're easements now. If you change that to a right of way, does that change? I, no, I mean, if, if it became a problem, you could look at it. I mean, I th my my gut tells me that if it became a huge problem, and they're public, you know, for all intents and purposes, they're public ways, right? The, at least the multi-use path. The town could probably condemn them. 
I mean, that's a that's a pain. But if you really felt that was a happen, you probably gonna, do that. But. Well, I mean, you already have issues with the other part of Moose Run that the trails are being usurped. So, I mean, I think that would need to be should be kind of looked right. into what options there are okay, related to that. Point is well made, and I think that okay. you know, just look them up. And so now that you've, I heard a sentence in there that clarified the community. So this is actually a sub to the Moose Run subdivision. So, but the PUD itself will have its own set of restrictions, covenants. So does that mean for that road that's private behind all of those um, uh, units, will they 100% be responsible for paying for plowing and maintenance of that road? Or is that going to be part of the greater Moose Run? It will be part of this this um, subdivision here. These the this the owners of these lots will have the responsibility for maintaining these internal roads. So, so what, just so I guess I'm unclear on the sub relationship. I, I guess I've never heard of well, it. Well, it's it's very common to if, if you had a condominium project here, the condominium project would have a condominium declaration. But that condominium would still be part of the Moose so Run subdivision. It's considered like a house. And this is the same way. This this subdivision is taking place within the Moose Run subdivision. It will be further in the a good way to look at it, these lots will be further encumbered beyond the encumbrance of the declaration for the rest of the Moose Run lots. So Within the greater Moose Run, like in a, at a Moose Run meeting, will all of those owners have a vote? Like I'm, I'm just not clear. I, I believe they would, but I'd have to go back and read the declaration. I haven't read it for years. That was that's where I was going. And so, so that's oh, just the question what? Nancy just, asked. So yeah. basically, this is really part of the Moose Run Association. Yeah. So that if they, so that I agree with what Nancy just said. So that if they have a Moose Run, when they have Moose Run Association meetings, all of a sudden these 20 or 25 or I whatever the number is. Like, I, what? Was just, I was just asking for information. I am asking that question. Yeah, but, but we don't know the answer yet. So, um, so we're going to look at it. Um, so I, it's not a, it's just, I'm just like seeking information at this point. So, uh, so we'll find out, you know, it might be on, a, I mean, not, I'm not even sure if the votes are by percentage of acreage or I have no idea, but I suppose we need to look at it. I didn't hear all of what you said, but. Well, we need to figure that out. Like, is this going to well, be considered yeah, one lot? I can't tell you if all of these lots get one vote in the in Moose Run or not. I, I, I'd have to read the declaration. Yeah, I, I think they ought to, because I don't know what the declaration says. Yeah, it'd be great to. Be, I mean, I'll look too, but it'd be great to pull Somebody else. I'm sure that will help. Okay. I think I'll close the public hearing now. And uh, I'll be right. So I guess we could have a pretty good idea. Thank you. I was asking for. More information about the area that he's going to do with the market ice for the public. And you were going to look at this line here over here. Yeah, all of these lines might change okay. as part of the subdivision process. Anyway, I don't think that's what, what's going on here. But it's part of the conditional use. Conditional use permit application. Um, if you can show more wetland reservation. Yeah, I, I, I think it, I, I I think think it has. I think that has merit. Okay. And it has no problem moving that long. Can I ask you a question? And, and also, I wanted to make a comment to you guys that might be helpful to you. I'm not necessarily opposed to this, I'm just getting into the um, so are you saying that in, I, I live in Moose Run for anybody yeah. that might not know that, 
Um, and Criterion runs through my lot, and there's uh, a right away, and I think that's a wonderful thing. But are you saying that we, as an association, could get together because it hasn't been maintained by the resort um, and do it and pay for it, and we could? I mean, I would like to see that happen. So this is the first time I ever knew about that. Um, that's kind of interesting. We could, you know, put a little private money in and, and redevelop those. Trails that we've been complaining about that aren't being used that are really so it's an asset for the town. The other thing is there was a lot of confusion here. I, I had my lot up there since the first day. They they all went on the market and sold within twenty minutes. Um, that might be slight exaggeration, but um, the, the I I have made it my business to go to the annual association meetings because I I missed one very important one apparently because one day I went to go through a trail. And it wasn't there anymore. And so I went to go talk to the three people who were our um, association board. And they said, oh, yeah, well, you didn't come to the meeting. We, we voted to do away with that. It was behind the Cutlers. And between the Cutlers and the Kaplans, there was a trail that sort of started on the corner of um, sort of across the street from the Lucas's house, which okay. used to be Eric's uh, yeah. police house. So there was a, a trail through there, not one, of the, not the ten foot right away that we have all the way up the right side of the road. Um, and so the association, or the probably the neighbors who actually were on that foot trail, didn't like it, and so enough people were there. There was a quorum, and they voted to do away with it. So I think that was why Phil Enos had all that um, concern about. We, you know, we want to maintain this well pedestrian village and pedestrian town and trails, all of our trail system, and how do we protect them? I, I, I think part of the confusion is there are there are trails that run all over this valley that sometimes started because Mike walked there sometime and then someone else walked there sometime, yeah. and then yeah. the next thing you know, there was a trail there. They were never dedicated, they were never deeded, they were they were never even agreed to. And the only trails that I know in Moose Run that were actually dedicated and are on the plat map are the multi-use trail, which is the criterion trail that runs behind your lots, the cross-country trail down here that comes back. And then when this trail was abandoned through here, someone said, oh, it would, we ought to have the way to be able to walk through there to the golf course. This 10-foot pedestrian path was added. And that's on the plot map. Unless I've forgotten, which is entirely possible, the, the, the multi-use cross-country bike path and this 10-foot path were the only dedicated trails in Moose Run when it was subdivided. I could be wrong, but that's the way I remember it. Well, yeah, so it wasn't criterion and it wasn't that 10-foot yeah. wide right away, which we have let go. If anybody's been up there and nobody uses it, we'll use it for sledding in the winter. Um, it's, it's not much of a walkway because anybody that's walked up Moose Run walks up the road. So, right. I, I mean, that's just how things evolve. Oh, um, you mean? Oh, you mean the path adjacent to the road? No, that's no. still there. That mm -hmm. hasn't been. Affected. Oh, okay. Um, and actually, it's in the front of my house, but it stops there. Right. That's, that's, that's the correct. end of it. Yeah. That's right. But correct. there was a little path right away of some sort, and I'm not sure because I'm not a lawyer what the right terminology, I remember seeing it on the maps and I did ask about it because it went away and the association voted to, to you know, make it non-public anymore. Mm -hmm. so. oh, and, and I'm telling you that's where it was. I don't know. It, it starts just below the Cutler's driveway. You know, Andy and Mary Cutler, that house. I, I'm sorry, I don't know the number. This isn't meaningful maybe to, if you don't know the owner. And it went sort of towards Missy's or through oh, yeah. that way. Hmm. You got to go back there. and look look yeah. at the recorded plat map and see if it's on that plat map. This okay. Yeah. Can I call you? Can you answer on that? A big pardon. Can I call you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome yeah. to call me. I... So that's what caused the concern. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, Criterion's still there, and maybe we should get on it and maintain it, put some money into it. Um, <coughs> thanks, guys. Thanks for all your hard work. Thank you. Not everybody's against you. Oh, no, no, no. This is information, not pro con. Yeah. Very See good. you Monday. Okay, thank you. Mike, you have So, Terry, my understanding is what I was doing here today.
was I was looking for an approval of the of the PUD conceptual plan, subject to approval of the zoning changes at town meeting. Is that correct? That's not my understanding. My understanding of task was to make sure all the information was and we had, we didn't have any more information that we would need so that you could make the application for the um, conditional use permit for the PUD. And if you should should desire the subdivision as well at the same time, the next meeting the best the public the subdivision yeah, I mean that'll take It'll take six weeks to at least to do that. But the formal well, application. I, I submitted a formal application. It has to be noticed. Well, this meeting was noticed. Well, the, this was noticed as a design review. What does design review mean? There's no, there's no provision. I've been very confused about that because there's no provision for design review in the PUD process at all. I, I, it seems like a misnomer to me. Um, yeah i think it's a conditional use permit application isn't it what our understanding is not act on it until the rules are set. Right. I, I agree no, with that. No, absolutely. But you don't, there's not going to be another application process. Well, my understanding coming out of last month was that if he brought everything forward that you were asking for, right, that list you just went over, that you were going to tell him Yes, we're, this is everything that we need. And in the March meeting, we will vote. Mm -hmm. We will basically, you'll ratify the decision based on the town meeting approval or not of the, the amendments to the zoning ordinance. We're not starting the application process all over again is what I came away from last month. Mm -hmm. So this is that like saying the application is complete. The application is complete. You're all ready to go, but you can't get your you can't give your final vote of approval, but you're not going to start from square one at the March meeting and say, oh well you need to bring X, Y, and Z before we can consider the conditional use permit. It, that's how I came out of last month. That was not my understanding from what Tara did. Mm -hmm. Well, what, so what did, what did you think the email from Tara said? Well, what we had was a continuation of the public hearing from the design review process. Now, no, Bill no, said, I never applied for design review. I applied for conceptual approval of the PUD. That was what my application was. That's what I submitted. I never applied for anything relative to design review. Well, certainly in my discussions with you, it was my understanding yeah. that that was a design review, that it was not an application. That was up to this point, that's been, I mean, I, I guess the area flag here, we were going by that process and, and all. That was my understanding. I've never even I've never even read the design review regulations as it, as it applies to PUD because I never saw right. I thought that we were it. talking about conditional, um, and maybe the terminology is what I'm confused about. But I thought that this was he needs a conditional use approval, right, in order to do the PUD. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. And that's what this is all about. That's it's what this is. So, use. so if we're calling this a design <laughs> review that. of the PUD for the conditional use, it still goes back to what I just said. That mm -hmm. you're basically telling him we have everything we need to make that final vote mm -hmm. on the conditional use. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we, we so far we've basically only reviewed what it is that's being provided. 
We haven't really reviewed, you know, the drainage or the existing conditions. Of you the just system. reviewed the drainage. You wanted a conceptual drainage we have plan, a plan, and I asked, and I asked Tara what she wanted, and she said we just need arrows showing where the, the drainage right. is going. That's right, and that's what it. Well, it was my understanding that today's meeting was just to to make sure we had everything that was needed for the application, not because we've been in a desire to. Now maybe I just misunderstood it. Okay, that's certainly been. What I was, uh, but isn't that what I just said? That you have everything you need we to make a right. final decision on the conditional use That's correct. status of the PUD That's correct. at the March meeting, because you can't make that final vote until you know what town meeting approves, yeah. right? Yeah. So, what are the other questions? There aren't any other questions. Just that I, you know, I haven't sit here and, and followed those arrows to the point where I'm satisfied that the drainage is fine. That's just been submitted for three weeks. But, but you know, and I would really love it if that three weeks changed. I mean, that three weeks is a huge problem worth submittal. You get approval today, that means if you want to go to the next month, you got to have all your work done in a week. It doesn't work very well. Well, I guess that. But the reason why you submit all that stuff early is so everybody can look at it. And if they've got questions when I come to a meeting, you can address those questions at the meeting. It was my understanding because this is a new issue, the PUD and a VC, and and she had she explained what the concept was that you have to approve the uh, conditional use permit right for that piece of property. Then yeah. the subdivision comes in. There's separate yeah. things. And yeah. So I think we were stepping through that process. Yeah. So so yeah. I what so, I envisioned is that next meeting. Yeah. Would be publicly noticed that it was a conceptual conditional uh, uh, use permit for a PUD application that was going to be coming in. We were going to review it the way we normally would and either approve or reject it. Well, I'd like, I thought that's what we've just done, and we're only looking for the, the, the zoning change to be able to ratify. So this is the everything that was supposed to be submitted for the So what have you been doing the, for two months? What the, does that what? review is for? That's yeah. fine. That's fine. No, no, no. I'm just asking the board what what are we as staff, what information are you going to request in March that you have not gotten over the last two months? Because I don't want to come in in March and then have you go, oh well, we need a letter from Jim Mayhew and we need a letter from Chris Hodges you know I mean we've done those things I I'm just we've got all the information that we need okay to on it. yeah that's what I was trying to get to today that yeah everybody would be looking at this he would provide the information that Tyre had said was act was additionally needed we would look at it we say yes we have everything we need now okay then the reason I'm saying because this is different than a regular subdivision process because it's this PUD in the VC is new and so I thought we were stepping it through but if the board is ready to act on it then I you can act on it right now I'm not asking you to okay I know you can't get approval but you could get approval contingent upon the passing of the amendment no you can't even vote that that is a that's what Tara was saying was don't take a vote right now mm -hmm. okay Take a vote in March after you know what happened with the zoning amendments. Has there been proper public notice? Yes. Yes. For mm -hmm. the application for a conditional use permit in the VC zone for the Snowbrook. No, that is not the language we used in the public Village at Waterville no. Valley. Then when does that notice go up? Okay. We we did we did notice it as a design review, a public hearing on the design review for a conditional use permit, design PUD, review. called whatever he's calling it. Brookside Village. Brookside Village. That notice went out. It design, did say. Design review, which you said we no, didn't do it. I under. No, we. That's the language, but it did mention conditional use permit for a PUD. So if you want another public notice, we can do that. Uh, that's that's not a problem. But again, are, is it going? Is there any additional 
or or anything that's going to come up in March that is going to be a new requirement. I don't see, I mean, I think you've already had an opportunity for two months to, to talk about this. So, and, and the public has, has given you their thoughts on it. Now, the subdivision, we're going to go through everything again. I mean. Wasn't this, today the public notice meeting? It was a continuation of, of last month. Can you get that public? Which notice? was which was a public notice? Meeting. Yes, but last no, month was, was a that. public hearing. Mm -hmm. Last month was a public hearing. Let's. She's going to get the actual public hearing notice that went out, and we'll get the wording correct. Okay. But that's why all these people were here today. That's correct. And this was a continuation because at your last meeting you didn't close the public hearing. It's you kept continued. it going to today. So what's Monday? It's a public hearing on zoning ordinance changes that, okay. we, that it, we are proposing. Yeah, no, and it's, it's and you know what? This project. You know yeah. what? It's let's no don't, don't call it a public hearing. It's no. really an informational meeting on what the zoning amendments are. That's yeah. I mean, I just don't want people to get confused. And everybody here is still voting against things in the zoning amendments because of this project. Yeah, I know. And I think that's really something you got to hammer on Monday. Then. I know. Because but I don't think you're going to change the minds of any of these people. Well, who are here a couple of them you won't. I think one of them we might have. So. In any case, I think to Terry's question, I don't think we're going to obtain any more information at the March meeting than we have now. Correct. And that's what I agree. So we wait and see what the public, we wait and see what March town meeting does, whether we have to consider this any further at all or not. But if it is approved, then at March meeting, we say yes or no. Correct. Okay. Okay. I think we're all on the same page, it's just semantics. You okay with that, Bill? Plus. March meeting, we say yes or no. Yeah, that's fine with me. On the conditional use yeah. permit. Yeah. I do have one question just to help clarify things in my own head. I don't think we even have design review, uh, site plan. Do we still have site plan re review? Re I don't know. I don't understand how site plan review has gotten folded into what we're doing. No, not now. site plan review. I think it design, has design review. review. Design I don't review understand. Is, is, is a part of the subdivision. May I read it? Where is it? Can you tell me where it is? I mean, because we're not in subdivision yet. We're only in PUD. Yeah, I'm having a hard time. There's a, a paragraph here with uh, obtained this from Carol. And she says application for conditional use permit for PUD needs to be noticed as if it were a subdivision or a site plan and follow the same a review steps, for example, informal, preliminary, final application, public hearing, decision within 65 days. If the applicant is ready with the subdivision and or site plan applications, or application for the first phase of one, this can be included in the same notice and the two applications would both appear on the agenda. So I think you know, we've gone through informal, preliminary, and we're waiting for final application. Uh, subdivision right, application. Right here, yeah. Bill. Right. Design review page now. Crash. Of subdivision or zoning? Uh, subdivision. It's on page nine of the current subdivision regulations. That's that's what I was going by. Was what Tara had written and suggested. It's not necessarily in the wording of the main unit development, but it was the informal, which we consider the design review, the preliminary, which I would consider today, and the final next month. Yeah. This is a continuation of the preliminary design review today. Today, this was the because the preliminary was your meeting last month. 
And that was what was noticed. But she shows the final application of something separate, which well, is what I was alluding to. Okay. So let's talk about the final application and what your expectation is then. He has submitted, and that's what I was getting to, the additional information that you were looking for. Which is what we <clears throat> tried to do today was make sure we had all the information right. we need. Okay. And so now we have it. Yes. Yeah. And so now we would move on to the final application. That was what. Right, right but not a separate application, though. You're going to take this information as the final yes. application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I, I just. Yeah. Next month, you, you consider the application, you vote for the application mm -hmm. as being complete. Yeah. And that's when the review process starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. Oh, everyone's saying the same thing. Okay. Well, what, first of all, what's what do you mean by review process? Well, I guess that's where you and I differ because you're considering that the review process is done. That's what I thought we were doing. And then we we basically upset because we've got all the information to us. We proved it. That's what you're saying. That's what you're thinking. And I'm saying no. We what we say that we've got what we need, and now the process. To review it. Is there anything here that you need that I've submitted that you think needs to be changed? Not that I think today. I mean, I think it's pretty thorough. From my, my looking at it, I think that we've got what we need. And I don't see anything. I mentioned a couple of things like the moving of the, uh, the boundary line. But that won't happen then. That'll happen during the subdivision process. Well, okay, fine. If that's what you want us to review the uh, Condition, I can't get used to saying conditional use permit. You're right. All I'm saying is I think it look it would be favorable for the conditional use permit if that line was moved to show more open space because that's one of the reasons you do a PUD. But you don't want to less time too. Um, the other thing was the I, I'm not comfortable yet with the easement. Granted, you know, you say well it's out there somewhere, but I don't know where to go to get it. And I don't have it. We'll go over that. Well, that's but it's recorded by Brown County Registry. The town process. has copies of it all. Well, but I don't want to do that at eight o'clock on March fourteenth. Mm -hmm. Why would we wait until March fourteenth for you to ask him at eight o'clock in the morning when neither one of us have existing documents? That's what I'm asking you for. What do you need us to come in with? Because we're just going to be out into April and May. And I just, no, we just made an arrangement. You and Bill, Bill and I are going to look into that stuff so that I have that information. So when it comes to the March meeting, I can say, I, okay, I've got it. I've got okay. it. So, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question, just to make it all simple. Yeah. Do you have a copy of the, mo the recorded moose run? Yes. You want to just look at it now? It'll take us 10 minutes and it'll be done. If you, if you could explain it to me, I'd be more than happy. I'd, I'd love to try to do okay, that. Okay, because I, I, I couldn't follow it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm not even going to go with what we got in the file and go into the registry. <laughs> the, the other thing that I think is is confusing is, uh, and, it, and this doesn't have anything to do with where we are right now, where we are, where we are. I think it's fine, and thank you very much. But the design review is a optional review phase by the applicant. Right. Right. I agree. I never applied for design review. Somebody I applied. Said you did. I, I look at the application I gave you. Yeah, I know. But some, when you, it's going to be the application that you you started out with. I mean, you can you have every right to go to a design review with the application. But, but I never chose to do that. Well, okay. But I mean, I it, it just it, it just. It, it has confused me. The term, just wondering where the term it was used in the public notice. Well, it's on our agenda. It's on the agenda. I mean, that's... So, irrespective of whether I applied for it or not, I got it anyway. Yeah, you did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just so I know. The result is the same. Huh? The result is the same. Pro yeah, probably. It just confuses me. I get confused easier and easier all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I have a question. It's, it's, it's on our town spot. Yeah. So, let's say now. We're in March. We have a, a the March meeting. We say, okay, you have your conditional use permit. What are you going to do with it? Well, at some point in time, but the application that was submitted gives me two years to come in with a subdivision application. Of, myself of those PUD 
changes. Okay, that's my, my right. And I just wanted to hear from you. If I'd like to do it, I'd like to do it earlier rather than later. But so as a as a developer or this the owner of this land, you're going to try to find a developer, somebody who will put up the money and hire all the subdivisions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and start building. Is that how the procedure that, that, works? That's what I'd like to do. I, I'd like to find uh, a developer who would take over this project fully permitted. I think that I work a lot with the planning board. I feel comfortable taking it through the planning board process. I think I can do a better job than someone who's not familiar with the process. Yes. So I, what I'd like to do is find a developer and say, okay, here it is, all the 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 homeowners associations all form, the architectural controls are all here, the subdivisions all approved, all the permits are in place. You, wait, 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 wait. My question is that the conditional use permit give you the, it gives you the right to do what? To submit an application for subdivision. To proceed with the uh, approval of the PUD. Yeah, or anybody else could, right? I mean, if I went and sold one of those lots to you, you could now come in and avail yourself of those PUD uh, changes because they run with the land, not with the landowner. Okay. Is my understanding. All right. So there's still this process that has to be completed. The subdivision process is the long, drawn out <clears throat> detail. You got process. two years to do it. This is just the answer. Yeah. Yeah, this we haven't even started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The fun has started. Yeah. So the, the, the conditional use permit is, is the uh, the starting go. Read the green light to go ahead. The starting go. All that does is say, okay, here's the revised parameters under which you can proceed to something. And you have two years to proceed with these new parameters. And if you don't, these new parameters go away. Yeah. That's my understanding. That's the story. And that's part of, I think, what we have to talk about with people on Monday, yeah. is that there is a PUD process in the zoning ordinance right now. And it's very unclear what can be done under that. P like, we could potentially, after going through that whole thing, we could say what he's proposing fits under our current PUD regulations, right? Because I don't think anybody really understands what can be done. We, we did one right. PUD. The Jennings Peak home sites, right. those five or six home sites over there, were done under PUD and the, and the setback, the setbacks were um, adjusted, um, changed. But to my knowledge, that's the only PUD that's that ever been done in the valley. But even but, though the PUD is... Uh, Conditional use permit is provided. We still have to go through this. Uh, the whole subdivision, subdivision plan, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's a good example. So in Jennings yeah. Peak, that was a PUD, and we changed the setbacks in our regulations around it. So in other words, whether they vote or not, we can still vote yes. Yes. You, okay. you. I mean, we'd it's have to so talk big. to Tara and town so council, to but who knows this plan that's being presented, you might have the right to do it under our current regulations. Actually, under the current regulations, the selectmen. The, and it's the right. selectmen, approved, it's not the planning board. Right. The amount of variances or changes, right. and then it comes back to you. Right. Right. <clears throat> but all the people who were here who were inflamed about one thing right. or another don't understand this. No, I know, and that's why I think <laughs> that's why we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Sharon, Sharon is trying to print those off right now from the registry. I felt their emotions were losing their beloved trails. You know, that's true. And that's why I brought up the easement. And, and that was a big issue. Something can be, be done. I agree with it. Yeah. Well, like, that's what I. I don't heard. want the trails to go away. Either. Well, right. while we have a minute, can I just address the trails? Those, all these easements that we're talking about are on private land. Okay, and yes, the town did approve a subdivision plan that had some trails on it. Okay, and the documents that the planning board reviewed for those subdivisions 
included covenants to protect those trails, mm -hmm. right? But the enforcement of those easements is not a town matter, mm -hmm. okay? We are a remedy so that if someone puts a fence across the trail or if someone plants a flower garden in the middle of the trail and the people who have an easement across there can no longer get across there, then they could come back to us and say, this is happening. Now, first they would go to the homeowners association mm -hmm. yeah. and say, get this fixed, right? And if the homeowners association said no and they really wanted the trail or it was the resort wanted to start grooming something or whatever, they could potentially come back to us as a code enforcement issue mm -hmm. and say, you guys approved this trail and now I can't use it, help me. Probably not gonna come back to the town, they're probably gonna go to court to do that, but it's the same thing as the electric company has easements all over the place in the valley, right? We, in Osceola, we built a shed over one of their easements. They needed to replace the electrical line underneath the shed. They showed up, presented the president of our board with their easement document and said, move mm -hmm. your shed because we need to dig the trench that we're allowed to dig by this easement. We moved the shed, moved the they, shed. they yeah. put in their electrical line. But further than I mean, that, now there was, so, there was discussion and a lot of people were saying, well, can you, you know, we said it's not really a planning board issue, but they're saying, well, maybe the planning board should make sure the document is really tough. And you said you went to the your lawyer bill and, and I, they said you can't do anything. I, yeah, I, yeah. So I agree with you, though, because either you say this is an easement or you say this is really, really, really an easement. But <laughs> anyway, they really have to go and they have to yeah. the easement, you know. I don't think you want to so change. Just define it. Yeah. I don't think you want to change it. And, and as far as the homeowners association changing or discontinuing a section, they can't discontinue. An easement. I, they can't discontinue an easement without the agreement yeah. of the easement holders. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so yeah, they did whatever they vote. They thought they voted on at the association meeting, but it probably legally has no force. Well, and Mark, has, has the town heard from any property owners in this one about the trail no. issues or anyone no. in general? At no. All? And this Today was the first time that I had heard anything that it was a problem. Do we have an electronic copy of the Moose Run subdivision with the uh, easements that we're talking about on it that I could have and send to the board? Uh, not electronic. Or well, if you download like, a copy from the good county, it's yeah, the county copy. they're recorded at the county at the registry. Right. <clears throat> I get it from here, but um, I don't know. She's the, the problem is you always want a recorded copy. You know, we all keep copies of the final approval, but they're not the recorded copy. Right. And one out of every hundred times, you find out that the recorded copy is different than what you think is the final copy. That's so, what all these numbers mean here. Yeah, so it's always important to go and get the recorded documents. Okay. Because, yeah, I'd like to help the uh, run owners distinguish between, uh, you know, something that they used but is not an easement and could very well go away and something that's an actual easement that they have the right to use, even if it means stopping those flowers. Resort. Responsible. Well, the, or the ski. Certainly, if it's the yeah. if it's the multi-trail easement for right. cross-country skiing and mountain biking. Right. I think that the trail that is in question mm -hmm. is the ten-foot pedestrian easement that leads through the subdivision. Right. I think that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't brought up at the last news run. Owners meeting service. I just have no idea. Are you a Moose Run owner? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know about these. Uh, Nobody mentioned it at yeah, the meeting, yeah. so uh, yeah. I had no idea. And certainly, if it's, uh, uh, well, again, the burden should be on the, the person who believes that their rights are being violated and they can't use the trail that, that they should. Yeah, they right. should take, take appropriate action. 
Yeah, I mean, now that we're aware of it, try to at least educate people on what yeah, and what that process is. is that yeah. Yeah. Don't just sit there and be mad about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. I certainly, if you're an owner of Moose Run, you should go to your own association and say, hey, what's going on here? Why are these trails? Why, why are our totally associated. We are the association. <laughs> yeah. As a member, when I was a member of Maybe the top crime, yeah. yeah, as an association, I mean, you knew that you can't do anything with easements. You have no right to change an easement because it's a recorded, legally right. recorded right. Right. Exactly. right that somebody else has on that private property. Yeah. Do whatever the easement allows them to do. I know, having lived in Massachusetts by the water, that there are some state laws, at least in Massachusetts, that if a path has been in use for a certain right. number of years, uh, mm -hmm. we can enforce it as a real path, even if mm -hmm. the landowner doesn't want you walking over their land to get to the water. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, but these home, I don't know about these paths, you know, and how it, long it could use. very well be. I think that comes from old English law where you can basically, they say, trench across any piece of property. Yeah, so, you know, I don't know the technicalities. Neither do I, but thankfully we don't live in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Anymore. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Do we have other business. Well, we're going to look oh, at the Do you have more copies of sheets? Uh, We'll certainly give it to Terry since he and, and uh, Nancy. Do you want to just have the chair. three of us do it for right now? And well, everybody's here. You want? Okay. Does everybody want to see this or not? Yeah. If it's an issue. Sure. Do you have Is a highlighter? Yeah. If you get a highlighter, I'll just highlight this yeah. trail. And then you can pass it around. There are a lot of lines on here, so I can't see how you can. What are those? This is the Moose Run plot map. There's several page sheets there. Yeah, it didn't all fit on one page. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, we can't get it all on one page. That's the largest that we can get them on. So so those, are the, that's, those are the documents that the architectural the declaration refers to, right? Yeah. I mean, you can look at it now, but it really... It can be hard to see. Just, we had to see the oh, really easement. Who did that? Was it John Marsh or was it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, he did this one. <laughs> 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 So if you shut down records, and it doesn't mean we want the property. We couldn't find it in this concrete book. Exactly there. He gave us a copy. Right. I look at it with regard to the economic well, you will look at these one at a time. This is, yeah, yeah. and that's what you have. And some of the concrete. Yeah, these things yeah. here that are you know, marked yeah. these. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Did you mark on one of these the corrections no, that they made? For, uh, this is the no, I left the trail. Oh. Oh. Okay. They're at the very first five minutes. Oh, okay. 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 So I didn't mark okay. up. Okay. They're, they're the very simple. simple. Yeah. Well, Me and I and two. And no, no, no. Not that. No. There were a couple of substantial <laughs> things, but they were just one word. Okay. okay. So just watch the first five minutes and you'll, you'll see. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, you got it all being recorded, so I'll be able to just listen. This is the. Yeah. Guys, you're missing the show. Get up there. This is the 10 foot pedestrian path. And that was put in there. That's right here. Yes. And that 10 foot path just historically was added when the subdivision was done because the, the, there was a cross country trail that ran through here that was abandoned. 
because it was a duplication of the one that ran down here. And as a concession to the people that hated to see that trail go, and that is a delightful trail with things that we've done on it, we added this 10 foot pedestrian trail that goes from the National Forest all the way to the golf course. Mm -hmm. And so that's the so one where I, is that described in here? You highlight, I, I'm sure it's one of your highlighted ones. <laughs> that's the 10 foot wide trail. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's the it's 10 foot wide Yes, that is going to be your copy or any of these copies for right. whoever. Okay. Now, is that 40 foot easement? Uh, you, you call it a 40 foot utility easement, right? Adjacent. I don't know if it includes it or if it's adjacent to it. But that's in Moose Run. That's this easement that runs right here. This is the, prop, the easement line. See it right here? That's an access and utility easement. And that's that power company telephone thing that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's everywhere. this one right here. Every condo is developed <laughs> has a 20 foot. That's how you get right. from the power well, line to the trail. And is that the so 20 foot rise? Right 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 that's the right 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 I did a copy of all of the declaration. You know, the number of the programs that act as you did in New York City. Mm -hmm. I went mm -hmm. yeah. we got the whole street. Yeah. We dug up the whole access way mm -hmm. into the harbor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Responsibility of the association, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember I read the damn book. I don't see it. It's not that it's not supposed to take it up with the test criticals. There's another. Just mark it. Oh, yeah. It's interesting, just the things that you say and what you do, like especially being the land use, even when you get a deed. Read every single word of for a day. Oh, we know we're there, and it's pages and pages of easements and this and that. And in some cases, that's right. Yeah. 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 And I used to try to really this trail. The 20 foot wide trail in utility is kind of high. I think that's one of I know that's right. one of the ones that these guys put use. In that, trail that, that, that is going to be high. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The fence, flowers, that's the other thing. And that's a bigger thing. That's a bigger thing. He's still yeah, providing if you look access on through the process because he's providing on this one, it, it, it's clear on this point. Yeah, this is the bed thing that's right now. But this is they a big issue now, as well as the trip. Just like the right. All right, so. Sense. Yeah, it's just people and have to. Where is have to this? Is probably the most I, I think, so I think maybe me here? coming from Connecticut, the, from uh, seeing things like this all over the place, that it's one of the best things for this multi-use trail and utility easement because in some places it has utilities. What right. I uh side of it put a bit is we've got plants on the floor for the neck of the trails too. Yeah. 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 I think that's yeah. it. Then it's clear cut. Yeah. And then they don't want that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought you wanted trails. Oh I know. No, no. Four, four. Four. Well right. four is on here. It's whatever they want that week. For the subdivision mm -hmm. it's it's whatever you want that week. And that's what it has to be. It's whatever you. It's what oh, you're yeah, using yeah. right now, so not even knowing that you're actually trespassing through private property mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. In other words, it's an updated version. Well, no, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So also there's the thing that he gets it. That's right. Yeah. So he is beyond yeah. the same. We came here to recreate. Yeah. I'm not too sure this town could be an amazing town. I know when we first moved up here, we came up here because we wanted to go to the Irish restaurant. And it was just, in our eyes, because we're more city people and just what we're used to, we come to these type of places to vacation and everything else. And in his, you know, law enforcement chief of police mind, we just invaded the area here when we came to dinner. But um, you know, but and a lot of people, well, a lot of people think the same thing because I'm on all the committees outside where I live, and they're all like, yeah, in people aren't welcome here. up there. Well, yeah, you are. And um, you just say, uh, you've seen someone in this backyard, but there's that many like this attitude. I think it's an amenity. I bought property and oh, yeah. as an amenity on the trails. We have a we have no door and we 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 own that property. That is our property and everything. But it's part of this it's part of the snowmobile trail. And we do it. He's got his cruiser sitting in the car. We have everything there. We have our porch. But people can go through our thing as a snowmobile. Hey. I wouldn't have moved up here or moved to this location if that wasn't an expected. You know, if you don't want people there and you don't want this type of living, then you need to leave and go somewhere where it doesn't, where it has those type of restrictions where you don't have to do it. I smile a lot with small bits. I like those too. Try that up here. But try it so then try up here. You know, so I mean, well, we have actually a Bible and we've got. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because you don't have to rush here. Although we can't want to go to the yeah. public. We're not going to decide. Yeah. Oh my God. Then it's like, yeah. Yeah. fat bikes on Northern Trail's trash. They should have to serve me. I can't 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 have to serve me. So huge with your snowmobiles and everything. And people have asked them, like, can we get from Thornton up to My husband was like, yeah, you should. You should. Which you should. You should. Because, it's, you know, it's, yeah. Well, the problem is there's a lot of it. Well, the problem is, and I yeah, see it. I missed that meeting. So, and I see yeah. it. Yeah. So, is it very important to think? So, they're making electric snowmobiles out of that room. Okay, so. But it doesn't matter. They're, I hear the noises, and I'm like, they're having fun. And listen, this morning, four o'clock this morning, right, I go out on my back porch and across the street the on the tracks where they grew that there's three snowmobiles whizzing through four o'clock in the morning. Is, and I'm like, these are the just out there having fun. Not, not my kids can't hear anything inside of my house. My dogs can't hear anything. But up here, it just seems like a lot of people I don't know if you hear it's like a baby community. And I tell yeah, people, I'm like, I'm like, why did you want that? I said, if you want that, go down to, go down to the and question becomes, and that This is a resort. You should be happy. So you guys should be able to do everything. And are they, are they a part of that? And it would be so community. People should be able to just run those up to the mountain to go skiing. Yeah. 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 That's my personal yeah. question. Yeah. 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 Well, well, you know, all this snowmobiles, right? You just go, boom, was right out there with their skis. Yeah, go skiing. Now, you see them. Yeah. You see the snowmobiles with skis. Can I say that? Yeah, I used to. It's not part of the application. Yeah. It's actually really good. They can't yeah. Be more of a public no. Uh, there's so much. Well, as far as your little notes here, um, those are your word notes. This place could be an amazing, amazing. And I saw it a million times. No, I don't. I think they. 
Okay, so what you're saying is you don't know around any association. Yeah. Yeah. So the that's it. Well, no, no, we can put this piece of paper in. And it really should be coming to us. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. And, mm -hmm. and as long but as we make that it's, record, it's great. We want it to be here at the time. You home. guys use responsibility to those get heard. Those get heard every seven to ten years. So at the end of that, it's a very standoffish. Well, no, these people, <laughs> these people were around 10 years ago. Right. I mean, we're talking about the plan that we don't make 10 years ago. Okay, we'll help us maintain So these yeah. kind of notes. Yeah, that's going to this for free. Basically, okay. just force. Is, you, is that everything that yeah. you need? Yeah. 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 And they just want growth and stuff. You know, it's a big thing. Huh? Was anyone else interested? Oh yeah, yeah Monday will be real right. interesting. <laughs> We're supposed to get a lift today, so. Uh, hopefully, that'll be good. Cross my fingers. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just I want one that we need to stay here so that we can come and do what they need to do. I got one that's fine. You've got one complete copy of someone that you want to. I have, yeah, I have the complete copies in my area that you're allowed to look at, not take. Did you get my message? I did. I did. I did. Yeah. No, you answer all the questions. My sales staff thinks that the combination house and water has to be more than a half. What is our town? I go for that. I expect it's a little bit. Right. No, it's not my business. I'm not going to get involved in it. Why is one of the rules to increase capacity? And this is just a small no, copy of it. This big one. I just wanted you to see that, that it is an effort. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks.
That's what he public. is requesting in the PUD. So that would become the conditional use permit, is that you would reduce the setback Which from 30? I don't know what the lot. Side yard is 20. It side yard 20. and village commercial yeah. for building is 20, I think. So he's asking to make it 10 instead of 20. And he would, that's explained in there. Yeah. One of the issues here is that site. I think he has it in his uh, typical lot layout. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's like okay, 10 feet. Yeah. But that's what he's requesting to change. This is what, uh, and there is a table too that tells you what the actual setback is according to um, the current. Yes, yeah, so what it's in there somewhere. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the what it was and what it is according to this right here. Oh, no, so they can tell you what it is now. What is right. Right. Yeah. Uh, but this is some of the concerns of some of the people who were <clears throat> yeah. hanging up on this. <laughs> and I said, come to the point. I didn't hear one of them ask that question. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was concerned about. Sorry, what was the the, the, the concern that was been floating around out there was the distance between buildings. Okay. And it didn't come up to be in this code. Okay. Yes. okay, we'll continue on here. Yeah, and we'll go to, does anybody have any new business? Then we'll move on to the committee reports and we'll start with the town code group since you're not going to be here. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, we um, <coughs> moving ahead at a pretty good pace um, and presented some of this at the public hearing, budget hearing, budget okay. hearing. First, that's what we're there. But we're working with Mark Kane, the SC group, um, and trying to get a better defined plan for what we want to do around Corcoran's Pond and along the Snow Brook Trail, uh, Village Trail. Now I'm doing it. <laughs> um, in terms of Grading appropriately, lighting and signage for wayfinding. Um, I'm sorry I didn't bring any of it with me, but we've got some really nice initial plans for signage that really tie in well with the gateway sign, and that's how we want to continue this whole thing and creating a family of signs. Um, so going forward, anywhere we need signs will be pre planned and we can just get them made. Um, there are still details that we're hashing out starting tomorrow, uh, so we will get, uh, get the committee together tomorrow afternoon to review what the initial suggestions were, because we really received those was it only a week ago. Mm -hmm. Only a week ago. So we've been looking over them individually, presented the rough sketch at the budget hearing, and uh, we'll dial in on some of the details and make sure we get an appropriate plan for town meeting. So we'll probably be meeting a number of times between tomorrow and tomorrow. Is there a target date to get these signs in place? Or? Well, I mean, a, a lot of, we have our budget that yeah. we're asking for. And a lot of what we have to decide is how much of the budget will go to grading. You know, the lighting, of course, will be a, a more expensive part of that. So, you know, we have to prioritize laying conduit and how many fixtures 
um, signage we feel like is a really important part of it. You know, we have everything from a larger kiosk in the square to a smaller directional sign. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but at this point we're trying to just get a plan to how to how to best start and and establish our, our next phases if we will, you know, they, as as the budget increases. But we want to, you know, make as big of an impact as we can in that kind of lollipop along village trail and the palm loop uh, or palm trail. Um, so I think we'll squeeze as much as we can out of it. Because really we could easily spend 150 on just breeding. I mean if we wanted to get into it creating just the perfect trail. So I, I think it's a matter of balancing it. Right. We'll be talking about the same information at the um, WBAIA on Saturday. Oh. Brooke and I are doing a presentation, so we'll be sharing those same slides with the AIA. Okay. Did the consultant have anything to say about how he might propose connecting the two sides of the, of the loop? Yeah, I mean, um, and some other suggestions came up at the budget hearing as well. At this, what we suggested were trails going off to either side and then up to the road and across that way. Cross um, over the road or? Yeah. Or no, up, up, up to the sidewalk. Yeah. And then and just use, use the sidewalk, the sidewalk right. as the connector for right now. Yeah, for now. Makes temporary. sense. So we can find out how best to do the bridge. Exactly. <laughs> and then how to afford that. Yeah. Stepping stones don't work because they get rolled out of place. No, actually, the stepping stones across the Mad River have held up very well, a lot yeah. better than I ever thought possible. And we haven't talked about it yet, but that's definitely an option that we could look at. I think the only concern is ADA compliance yeah. and because we want to yeah. make this as accessible as accessible a trail as possible. Right. Unless if we could do stepping stones and have a board across them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, a, just something, you know, that I was going to say that. Yeah. Some sort of a cheap bridge just lays on the stuff and if it gets washed away, you just take it away. Take it away and went. Yeah, you take it on the inside. No one talk about a bridge across there, okay? Just yeah. not at this point in time. Let's just. 700,000 bridge. bridge. Yeah, exactly. It's a, walk, it's a walkway. Why don't you, put, why don't you stick it onto the stepping stones? Yeah, okay. Just, fine. Well, you don't like any of that stuff. I agree completely with you, Terry, and I think we should just have that silly little wooden bridge that we used to have across the yeah. river out on that river trail, but unfortunately you can't do that. And I just don't want to give anyone the impression that that's right. what's going to happen. So right now we're not connecting those ends of the trail. Period. Okay. Conservation Committee. Okay, sure. So the last time I spoke, not much has changed from what we talked about, uh, but the there was a new topic, a lot of discussion on salt on the road. And does it wash into the rivers? And they were very concerned about it. Um, Mark might want to elaborate a little more on this, but I think that they're going to do a study at some point and check the water on the river and see if there's any salt runoff. Um, I don't. I think there was just a lot of discussion on that. I don't think there's anything else that we can report. Mark, I think not really. It was like dog poop in the winter; just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, without being too facetious, that's exactly what happens. So it really. I mean, if yeah, if you have a rainstorm mm -hmm. and you go and test the river water. It'll probably have sodium chloride, yeah. but 20 minutes later, you go back, or the next day you go back, and I guarantee you that those levels are gone. Um, the, I think the measurements we got to talk to the conservation commission, but I think what we're what we need to do is just look at long term: are we killing vegetation? Are we killing? you know, fish in the river, those sorts of things um, should be the measuring sticks. And 
yeah, day to day, you're, you know, you're going to have differing levels of, of salt. Do we have dry in here? Can we no. Bring the rose dry? It's um, the application mechanisms are very expensive for the liquid forms, um, and it would be cost. It's cost prohibitive for us to, to do that. Our so, total, our total miles is about five miles. Yeah, we're only talking about five yeah. miles of road. I'm about to say, I mean, we can, yeah. nothing we can do about Route 49. Yeah, 49. We don't maintain going down the river. So, yeah. but there was just a lot of discussion on that, and they're working on that. Some kind of result. Didn't Jim may you say a select board meeting a couple meetings ago that other other. Uh, 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 chemicals we can use a much more expensive calcium chloride or some of the yeah. There's calcium things. chloride. There's yeah. molasses based, sugar based. Yeah. Um, but they're all triple, quadruple the cost of rock salt, which is why 99% of the road treatment in this country is rock salt. It's because yeah. it's the most effective and most cost effective way to do it. Um, I would simply comment if the, yeah. if the town wants to go in that direction and pay more, then they have to deal with the consequences with the tax rate. Right. I mean, there are alternatives. There are alternatives. But they're much more expensive, whatever the results of yeah. the and I, salinity I mean, in the water. I, goes. I, would, I would say that we would, as a community, look at alternatives if, you know, all of the roadsides are brown all summer long because everything is dead. And, I mean, maybe. if we were having, no, and maybe, yeah. but it, but we're, I mean, no one has complained to us that that they see those areas. I mean, and certainly you guys should let us know if you think we are having an adverse environmental impact, but we just can't see it anywhere. Is there scientific evidence of salt killing vegetation? Oh yeah, yeah. It'll if if it's not if it's not washing away, it will kill vegetation. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the dead trees on Boulder Path Road have nothing to do with salt. On Boulder Path Road, no. Yeah. Those, Those dead trees by the Red House mm -hmm. are dead because they're old trees and we've been trying for years to get yeah. them to, to get rid of them. They're not. That's, I don't think anything that we're doing to them, I think they're just dead trees. Yeah. And then lastly, they, they just discussed about term limits. They're just working on it. That's about all. Term limits for the board member. Yes. A couple of years we're out. No, for the conservation. Yeah, for the, yeah. You're in, buddy. <laughs> Eric Green. You're here yeah, for right. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> None of you are going anywhere <laughs> until I retire. <laughs> yeah. That's a long way out. That's so. what the term limits are. You have to be here 15 years. That's it. <laughs> the term limit is 15 to 20 years. You've been listed for that long. Okay. Um, Communications. I have a notice here. 25th annual spring planning zoning conference, Saturday, June 1st. Save the date. If anybody's interested, Karen, you probably get this at the. Mm -hmm. um, we. Yeah, I put it with all of your paperwork. Mm -hmm. So we have historically sent two or more people, usually a longer-term person and a new person, on the board. But they are very useful for at least a couple of you to go and hear what other planning boards are doing and to hear the recent legislative changes um, and bring that information back. Um, we as staff cannot keep up with everything that's going on. So you guys can, can send a couple of folks. We would really appreciate it. We pay the whole thing for you. you know, uh, so. Where is it? Concord. Concord. It's in your packet. Do we know the time? Um, they're usually day long sessions. Uh, they might break them up into a morning session and an afternoon session. I don't know the specifics of this one, but um, 
but there, there are, um, <clears throat> if you want more information, we'll try to get it for you. So bring this in to the special carry. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Do we want do we want any feedback from those of us who can't do it on Monday? And, um, yeah, we need to talk about Monday. I think. Okay. Yeah. I can maybe ask for your comments. Nancy, we're gonna try to get us out of here, but it ain't gonna happen. Oh, no, yeah, we do have. I don't know if anybody, everybody's aware of it. There is going to be a public meeting uh, Monday <laughs> at three o'clock here. Um, unfortunately, Tara can't be here, but it's basically to lay some fears that some town people may have with regard to the amendments that we're proposing. Apparently there's some rumors going around and it's uh, having a negative effect on it. So um, we're hoping we there to explain and to address some of the issues that are coming up. You can see some of them coming up. <coughs> yeah, the, the changes are very technical. So yeah. Um, who's us to help us out? They, the, um, this package that Tara put together, which has the the black and the red crossed out and the blue is available for these people to review it's available on the website on the website so yeah so on the home page of the website we have a, a hearing notice for those for the meeting on monday if they click on that they get redirected to another page and at the bottom of that page that full text is there so it's a pdf it's a pdf yeah so if, uh, if you want to be there, I suggest that you have a copy of that with you because it's um, pretty good to help try to explain. I mean, it takes a while to come through and find the references that are made, but uh, I, I reviewed it the other day, and after you've gone through it, things kind of fall together, and I think it helps to refresh your memory. Right, do we have paper versions of Yeah, we No one's getting mine. Yeah. But we have received them. You this received them, I think, at the last. Yeah, time. It, it has all or yes, uh, it's really the December good. meeting. You may have gotten uh, copies, but well. we have that, given that to you. Yeah. So, so the December meeting. The December meeting packet. Okay, I so also, I also have a town manager's blog that you can get to there. off of the town website homepage and I have done a blog entry yesterday um, that tries to very succinctly summarize each of the changes I would appreciate it if you guys mm -hmm. could go look at that and tell me if I said anything wrong um, and if you want me to word anything differently on those but it, basically what I do is I say, okay, here's what the change is, and here's Mark's comments. And then, you know, I go down through all seven. It's so it's on the web page. It's on the web page. At the upper left-hand corner, it says town manager's blog. Just click oh. that, and it's the Latest entry day. from yesterday. And once that's done, uh, forward it to Jan. Well, I will. Done. Once yeah. you guys have said that it's okay, but I don't want anything to be on that blog that's going to contradict Yes. Anything that you might say on Monday. So, if I what, miss what, the vote. what do you suggest for the process on Monday? I'm thinking that we'll open the public hearing and that you you could almost take your little blog thing and read it. If you know. want me to do that, or you guys can read it, I I think I think it's gonna don't I would not have me do it. I would have you do it. Okay. And because you guys have to tell them that you're in favor of doing this. Um, and I'm going to have the same conversation with the selectmen. I mean, if you guys really think this is what we should do, you need to say that to the town. And you guys went through the whole process month after month of talking about these changes and everything else. And, you know, they're looking at it with five minutes of thought looking at a subdivision right in their front yard yes, so they're the not making a decision so you have a whole bunch of different reasons for doing the changes than what they're thinking right. all these people yeah. were from moose run they're all from moose run or right across the street sorry who can be here on monday 
Okay. So, uh, there were and, some people that And the selectmen will be there also. So I think you guys need to decide who's running it and who, you know, because I don't want turf okay. wars to erupt chaos. and yeah. chaos to erupt uh, at the meeting. So you guys should know what they're going to say before. I, I would say that it should be run by the chairman of the planning board and just roll that since we're most familiar with it. Yeah. And it's just run down each and every. Uh, oh. Read the plain one. Of each of them. Yeah, read bunch. it. Read the, right. you know, and make a little changes. statement about it and then Why open it up to questions. I think there's a fundamental lack of just knowledge mm -hmm. about who we are, why we're doing anything, what we right. do. So I think starting out with, you know, what is, the, mm -hmm. what is the planning board? What do we do? What are our challenges? Mm -hmm. And why did we commission someone to work with us for a full year mm -hmm. on making these changes? Right. So, because they have no idea how much right. work went into this and what the purpose was. And that it's a long-term project. We're not deciding this for this project. This right. We have no idea what this project is going to be. And it continues on. Yeah. Right. This, this project was not in mind when, when these changes were made. These are changes that we made based on, you know, our plan for the town and, uh, you know, the goals for the town, which they would know because they voted to give us last March this expert to work with us for the whole year. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we need to start out on that basis that, you know, this is this was for the town and it's, it's happened so that the developer wants to actually make use of it. Right. And it's yeah. going to help us because now we have real rules. But there's nothing more fundamental in human behavior than fear. Mm -hmm. And what these people sense is that there's going to be this clear cut and all of this undesirable stuff that's going to be sitting right in front of you. Little big boxes on them. Yeah. yeah. We can also have the changes on the TV screen. That way, if you want to go to a section, we'll have the PDF right there. And then there's no, you, know, you can look right at it. Okay. I think having the zoning map over there would yeah, be good too. Definitely. Just so, and I, what do you think about if I just okay. line the tables up here, we can get more chairs in? Yes. Um, have you guys basically up there behind the table together and Tables double wide, so we can't. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't reach I, over. I, I, Chris is ordering ordering some uh, rental uh, bulletproof vests <laughs> for all of you. Helmets. Yeah, helmets. Uh, the SWAT guys the, here. The SWAT guys. Yeah. Will be there. Um, did we have a color coded uh, zoning map? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, I have one upstairs. Okay, and yeah. That one's impossible. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. Right. Here I can Understood. Tell what yeah. 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 We'll yeah. have the color one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have the call one I'm right about there. Big one. Yeah, yeah, right. right. So that big one. Can kind of see yeah. the idea. <coughs> okay. All right. Anything else on the meeting on Monday? You're all welcome to come. Please do. Um, Encourage. Three o'clock. There's a meeting today too, right? Got to change from yesterday. It's select more. Select at three thirty. At three thirty. Zero. Okay, well, then anything in any other items come up? Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. A second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you for coming. Hey, Rich, what's uh, what's going on in that meeting this afternoon? Looks like the agenda. Anything? Right. Oh, I remember. I don't think.